Hello, hello. Another what Sunday is here. Episode 151, Creative Robotics. Robotics is taking over. The, the bots. The bots. The AI. The AI gods. Shout yeah. out to Empress Rajiba G7. Blessings on this lazy Saturn. To, to Saturday, to Travis Duke and to Artitex and the Oracles in the chat. What's up, what's up, what's up? Another Saturday is here. Another week has passed. Hopefully you had a stress-free week as possible. Uh, we got a lot to get Shout to. Shout out to Mark Gordon. What up, Mark? Oh, Mark. Forgot about you. <laughs> we got a lot to get to. Uh, this this AI situation that's going on in the music industry. We're going to get to it. Um Yeah, the AI system we got to get to. Uh, we're going to get to so a little bit, of, like always, a little geopolitical stuff. Um, <laughs> Chicago is jumping off. <laughs> they, sick, they might really be sick of... Jumping off. They popping off. They might really be <laughs> done with the way things are right now. We'll see. Black people are done with the liberals, the uh, Democratic. We thought the same thing in 2020, and it didn't go the way... They're saying vote red yeah, in they Chicago. Said, they said the same thing, but we'll see. Anyway, let's go ahead and get right into it. First story. I talk about Tyler Perry too much, probably. But Tyler Perry re Shout the- out to the Honorable Sienna. <laughs> up, honorable. Hey, everyone. We're back for another weekly recap. Sharing light. Mark Gord. I'm voting couch. <laughs> 20, 24, 2024. That's what I said. That's Travis's theory that he, he believes. Stop out. doubting my people. Hush. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Tyler Perry re ups deal with BET Media. Gets new seasons for nine series, uh, including Sisters in the Oval. I'm sure Honorable Sienna watches Sisters. I didn't know why people watch those shows at all. Then we looked at a clip on um, Paramount Plus, I think, and it's pretty much just the Didn't they have a show called Brothers? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh. It's the same show, basically. Uh, it's a lot of sex on there, I guess. That's why they No, like because it. on the Sisters, on the Brothers, they have a mother... Uh, they have a matriarch on there. Yeah. Never watch that stuff. Never. Never. <laughs> well. <laughs> well, we don't believe you. You need more people. But yeah, uh, we we asked this a few weeks ago when we saw Tyler Perry getting all these deals with Netflix. Mm. What was going on with BET Plus? BET won't pony up the dough. So I don't, I don't know if that has something to do with it. Maybe he was just doing, you know, playing both sides, uh, uh, maximizing his financial ability. So. Now he has his re-up with BT, nine new series, I mean, nine series, uh, some including. new shows, including some old ones. The old one is literally fake scandal. Mm. It's just fake scandal. Except he went all the way in the, and made the uh, the president's wife black and a half biracial kids and all that stuff. We well, you know that Gabriel wanted that red role. Who? Gabriel. Oh, Gabriel. Union. She wanted that role uh, <laughs> that Kerry Washington got, but they said, she said that she didn't get that role because she pretty enough that's what she alleged I so they it. so she got uh the the bet one uh Mary being mary, mary jane. jane which was not bad they didn't want to pay it though but gabriel said they don't pay <laughs> a nighttime soap opera is always crazy entertainment like tubi. <laughs> tubi i've never watched tubi how is tubi tubi is legendary <laughs> all right tyler Perry is extending his partnership with paramount the prolific creator has signed a new a big new agreement with companies bet media under the pact he would deliver hundreds of new episodes of BT and BT Plus, spanning existing and new series. Perry is well on his way. Um, as under the deal, BT Media Group has picked up new seasons of eight current and one new series from him. That including an eight season renewal for the number one series among black 18 to 49 viewers on all TV, Tyler Perry's Sisters. Oh, wow. A six season renewal for Tyler Perry's The Oval, a fifth season renewal for Tyler Perry's Assisted Living and Tyler Perry's House of Pain. House of Pain still on? And uh, all of ET for well, the House of Pain, this will be season 11 overall. You remember they brought the kid back, the dude? Oh, yeah. And he looked like he was, he Boy. lost so much weight. He might have been on that Ozempic earlier than mm-hmm. everybody else. That's why he looked like a like an old gentleman, like an older person when he came back. And he had a gaunt look. She said, never seen uh, any of BET's original programming. Start watching it when he was on TBS. Haven't had cable since. TBS was uh, House of Pain. Yeah, let me say this. He had one good series, House of Pain. I feel like House of Pain, the original, was not terrible. Meet the Browns at first was not terrible. It was it a step da- above the Wayne Brothers. House I think of it Pain. Was, I believe it was t- it was dated more than anything. 
Yeah. But that type of humor and that type of thing was more so early 2000s something. But anyway. Uh, Cat Williams. So we, we're going to talk about some beef later. <laughs> Cat Williams started the year, said it's the year of truth, revealing. And it's been that. And man, oh man. Uh, but Cat Williams to stream live Netflix comedy special four months after four months after the viral club. Shay you know why he's doing that live? George. Shout out to Mr. George Wilkins. <laughs> so Shannon saw those number on, numbers on YouTube. So he's like, we need to do this live. You think that's what it is? You've always said, well, why no. don't they have a live uh, streaming for like the people who subscribe? We have the subscription for Netflix. Well, they started, they have commentary. They did it last year with, uh, with, uh, or the year full ass with, um, the one with Smith slap. Uh, 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 Chris Rock. Chris Rock did it live. So they've been doing the live thing. This ain't the first one. So, Cat Williams' live service is coming to Netflix. What you think? You think, uh, I, it's great. I don't know. We, we saw the pressure that Monique put on herself when she said, you know, she wanted a special and then she did her special and it didn't get the most rave reviews. It didn't reviews. get any reaction, honestly. You didn't have a, you didn't have a whole people bashing you. You didn't have a whole people yeah, talking I did see, about it. I did see both which sides. Mean, you saw it? Yeah. Well, you know, I don't be on. Shout out to Drinky Drake. What up, what up? Uh, why no one talks about Tyler Perch universe like they do power? Because they don't put respect on his name. They don't uh, appreciate <laughs> the work he does. Man, Tyler Perry show. Power Spike was first. Lee. Tyler Perry, I mean, it's Tyler Perry. The Power or 50 Cent's first couple seasons of Power was pretty good. That shit went down the toilet just like BMF is going don't down Don't talk the about toilet. BMF. I like BMF. BMF going down the toilet just like it, so. Uh, Travis, you might be on to something regarding that young man possibly being on Zipnik because he didn't look old versus a youngster looking <laughs> losing weight naturally. Exactly. Yeah, something was up with him. Yeah, We're going to talk about that later, too. That gaunt look. So let me just play a little this 30 second trailer of Cat Wood. So the name of this one, Woke Folk. Live. Um, We're live. What do you think? If he was able to go on Shannon Sharp and garner that much you think Netflix attention dro- Netflix probably dropped the bag on him too yes Netflix gave him a big <laughs> a big bag for this one live on Netflix four months after that interview that did was that 60 million yet who the Shannon Sharp interview with Kat yeah I haven't been back to watch the numbers last time I saw it was like 56 million or something but yeah told y'all Monique Wicked than Puppy Piss she the WNBA of comedy I will say this though, when Cat Williams did an interview with Shannon Sharp, he kind of spoke on, you know, obviously responding to these comedians and other stuff going on. But when he did his interview with Joe Rogan, he talked more abstract, you know, more esoteric things. And I feel like they didn't get the same reviews. Because that's what Joe Rogan talks about on his platform. But I wonder, does that mean that in his comedy special, which one is he going to lean more towards, you think? He got to lean towards. He got to, the way he, he talks about pockets. himself is. He's balanced. He does based on the crowd. So if it's a mixture, then he's going to balance it. Well, it's not necessarily black, white. It's more so when he get on that stage, it's going to be some expectations for him to definitely address the reaction to the interview. And he's also going to be expected to clear up some things that he said on the Joe Rogan podcast. Well, he'll do it. He's a rancor, a storyteller. So he'll be able to be fun, do fine on that stage. Cause I saw a lot of people say that they felt like the interview he did with Shannon Sharp was the funniest they ever seen him be because he was sitting down, he was talking, he was, you know, doing some That's storytelling and all this story stuff. Teller. Or is he going to lean more towards the more physical comedy? He's never been a physical comedian. He's not uh, JB Smooth, but he's always been more. He does a little bit of theatrics. Yeah, on more stage. on stage. You think he's going to be more. That little clip star, he's still going to have a lot more energy on the stage. Yeah, he displays energy when he's on the stage. We'll see. Honorable, she ruined the special with LGBT nonsense. They kept that going to expand their audience and only a few uh, million claimed to be in the U.S. Well, you remember Monique's sister came out and said that Monique was part of the LBTQ. She said Monique likes yeah. women. And that's something that I feel in Hollywood they have to eventually come out and say because... That, that, I was, that was proven to me with Nisi Nash. That destroyed my heart. That <laughs> really Nash. Bro- Nisi Nash really destroyed my heart. That was crazy. Because I remember her just saying how she caters to her husband. Yeah. Uh, Shannon said recently uh, the interview is two million away from being the most watched on YouTube. You remember Nisi Nash's famous line she said about having a husband? Yep. Keep him uh, belly full and scroll him mm-hmm. empty. Damn right. 
<laughs> Cat is control opposition. Uh, KW or Cat Williams is likely to cave to on Netflix. You, you think? Oh, that's another thing. Remember during the pandemic when the whole cancel culture thing was getting pushed with Dave Chappelle, and Cat Williams came out and said, "If you're a great comedian, you should know how not to offend people." So is he gonna get on that stage and be on some pulling punches type thing where he's not going all the way? He's defending certain aspects of society that's being pushed, the agendas. I don't oh know. Guy. Although it, it can't be the fact because he he kept bringing up the dress with Shannon Sharp. Yeah. And how how his he still got a virgin asshole and stuff. So he he's clearly not gonna push that that agenda too much if he was speaking somewhat against it when he was on Shannon Sharp show. So all right. You said JB Smooth like he a household name. Well, J.B. Smooth, J. Smooth is in a, has a lot to do with a lot of the comedy you watch, especially if you're black. Late 90s, early 2000s, he's on a lot of those. He kind of crossed over into the white comedy sphere uh, around the early mid-2000s. But early, I mean, late 90s, early 2000s, J.B. Smooth had a lot, to do with it, a lot to do with that writing that was going on. So, yeah. Uh, we need to talk about the black man advocating to turn the, these women out and lose them to women. <laughs> Uh, uh, bring another woman in the bedroom and she leave with the woman she talking about threesomes that's tough all right let's talk on this right quick quick little story i want to get to i can't say this last name so i'm not gonna try francesca rivers is the latest black woman to face predictable pattern of misogynoir after success so they have a new a play uh romeo and juliet Starring Tom Holland, the white guy, and this, Desidea, this young Desidea. woman, right, yeah, this young woman right here, and obviously white people <laughs> are, you know, pushing the whole. Why are you trying to black? Um, I agree. Watch these characters. Why are you making Juliet black? Or why can we have a uh, have two black? I, I, if I'm not mistaken, people. though, I'm pretty sure Romeo has been played by a black man before. I know Denzel Kifa, played. Shout out to Kifa. What up? What up? I know that uh, Dave, Sh- not Dave Chappelle. I know that Denzel Washington played uh, Macbeth. Yeah, and I want to know. I think he played uh, another character. I know he played Macbeth and another character. We can never get two black people playing these, though. Oh well, yeah, it's kind of so. the thing. So and they didn't find her the most appealing. That's so. really the biggest point. That is the biggest thing. So they kept calling her unattractive, and I was shocked <laughs> by how many black people was like Othello. Othello. I think Othello was the other one. Shout out to Anko, Peace what and up? Solidarity, fam. Othello and uh, Macbeth. I think in, in, uh, Denzel got another movie coming out where he's playing one of those Shakespearean characters. I can't remember, can't remember right now. He got another another movie coming out. Yeah, I mean, with uh, Spike Lee, I think. No, not Spike Lee. She's not else. Black American either. Yeah, she's not. So the white people was calling her unattractive, saying that she has no business playing uh, Juliet, and there's no way you would sacrifice for you know her. So we they got our Romeo and Juliet on Martin. <laughs> Julio. So, was, so what is y'all opinion what is your opinion i think that she had I, Wait, oh. when it comes to shakespeare characters because it's not really supposed to be a race involved we know there is well shakespeare's the real shakespeare is black right we know but they made it white so at this point we got to say that it's not racist at all should be involved um no she shouldn't have played a role so you think it should be a more attractive woman or it should not be an interracial story it should not be an interracial story but it fits the whole dynamic of the two families Worn against each other, rivals. No, it was based on money. That ain't the point, though. You can change the dynamic in the modern day. And remember, well, it could be this two families. Ba- it could be based on class as well. We got to remember this is the UK. Okay. In America, this has been going on. This type of stuff, this type of uh, casting has been going on for the last 10, 15 years. In the UK, this is very normal for them. <laughs> very normal. So, yeah. No, she don't look like Corey. Corey looked better than her. <laughs> is that the woman? Uh, looks like Snoop's sick daughter. They couldn't find anyone else. Just curious. LOL. <laughs> Kifa, you're absolutely right. Wow. Find someone else. LOL. <laughs> yeah, I think you're better off. But, you know, they're standing on it. It's Apparently, it's successful. Why they, didn't they go get, just have Zendaya play his opposite? You know, that's that, his biracial woman in real life. They tired of parenting They together. would have been fine with her. They try, they, they're tired of using her to sell him. Or go get Kiki Palmer. You know, <laughs> she down with the swirl. All the right, original we white people were never attractive. This is on brand for them. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we had to spark them up. All right, Marshala Ali, Blade movie will reportedly start filming this summer. We don't talk about this movie. 
this this movie been in production, been in the making what five years now, and I don't even give a damn about it. So now they finally seem like they scrapped all of the agenda stuff they had coming. Remember last time we talked about this movie, they said it was pretty much he's gonna be the fourth leading character with a Hashtag bunch of women. Hashtag not my blade. So now they're saying they scrap they're scrapping all that to the side and they're gonna make it about him killing vampires. Oh, they got all this wokeism out of the script. And it's like, wait, so you've been <laughs> debating this many years on getting this movie done and you're just now coming to the conclusion it should just be about him killing vampires? Oh, Wesley was behind the scenes. Like, nigga. Man, they ain't doing that, none of that. Wesley wouldn't have stood for this either. He would have not did that. Blade sucks. Is this a win for him? When they said why the Why the delay? Well, mm-hmm. according to the previous uh, people that were talking about the old, the, the, the scripts that existed at least before, he was not really going to be considered the main character of the story. So this definitely might be a win for him. He might get more screen time, and it might be actually based on him and Blade being Blade. So He's stupid for staying. I lost all respect for him as an actor. Well, black people, we don't run or maybe and fight he, for what we want. Maybe he, Yeah, maybe he won from the inside. He was able to get them to change it back. We don't run. So we'll see. It's unfortunate. I still think they should have had, uh, what's it called, a part of it. But it is what it is. Uh, more Sir news. Charles. CNN access Charles Barkley and Gail King's weekly show. We kind of knew this was coming. All we kept asking, who, what's the demographic for the show? I think they were trying to make it's, Gail King the liberal and make him Charles the Barkley the conservative. I and mean, they had this show where they just talk about stuff and come to a middle ground. Or they just couldn't afford Gail wigs. <laughs> Gail wanted a bag, too. Gail said, this don't make her no difference. She, it got, don't, she got a big bag on her other uh, platform that she's on. So this is some pocket change. Yeah, CNN actually Charles Brock and Gail King's weekly show, King Carter, after six months. Damn. Six months. And keep in mind, Charles Brock is considered one of the more entertaining people on television. They did, you... gra- they did grab the younger demographic, though, they said in the article, I believe. Which was surprising. I think that's the NBA audience that followed him. Yeah, and then, then Charles also said that he could not fully dedicate himself to this show because, you know, he's on TNT, their TNT. sister uh, network, yeah, TNT. TNT. But, he, I mean, he only, that's only during the season. He could have did something. He said he was booked. He just didn't want to do it no more. Uh, he did it for the bag. They had no script for the for the longest. Uh, people tired of LGBT agenda. It's not profitable. This show sucked. Charles Barkley, the show sucked. <laughs> they lied to him and told him, that he had a script when uh, he first signed, only to later find out none existed. Idiot. So the, oh, so they were just playing games with uh, Marshall Ali. They were just lying to him about a script. So why did Gail El King, a cult name? Wait, hold on. We've said before that a lot of times these uh, these companies they w- they will announce a show or a movie to see the reaction, and if it gets a big enough reaction, then they'll start actually doing the writing and the, the production. So you think they announced the Blade movie just to see the reaction first? It's not the first time they've done some something like that. But they said that it has approval. Everybody gave him the go for him playing the role. Uh, Gladdy, <laughs> does it have the black support? She does. She loves black men. She loves it when nah, we say she motherfucker. Lost she lost it with Kobe. No, was that? Yeah, it was Kobe. That was a mishap. That was, she lost it with Kobe. She was just him. mad about, she was salty about him leaving a bag to a Hispanic woman. <laughs> Look at Charles' hands. Yep. Mason. Yeah, we know what Charles is about. Yeah, so the show is over. Uh, the And I, I've been saying for the longest, a lot of these networks, whether it's Fox News, MSNBC, CNN, at least last year, I don't know about this year because I haven't watched them much, they started kind of drifting from the extremes of the left and the right and started trying to go more middle, especially after them lawsuits came after that damn um, voting machines uh, fraud situation. Especially Fox News, they started moving towards more towards the center. So I think a lot of these networks tried that and they thought because Char Barkley, his politics seems one way and Gail King's is another, that the whole middle ground thing could have worked with them. Mm-hmm. But I don't think Charles Barkley meshes well with a Gail King. Charles Barkley's is confrontational, a jokey, confrontational personality. She's just like more corporate host type thing. So mm-hmm. I don't know if that dynamic would really ever worked anyway. That's smart announcing it earlier. Starts a bidding war for the project. Yeah, that's pretty much what they do most of the time. Uh, speaking of a uh, bidding war... OJ Simpson will be cremated. Brain won't be donated for CTE research, says a state ex- uh, executor. Uh, so they're not going to have his brain donated for CTE research. They're going to cremate him. And it's the same dude. I think it's the same guy that said he's going to make sure that that other family has nothing to do with getting none of his money. But apparently he walked that back or something. I don't know. <laughs> they w- well, we haven't seen that. So, Well, I'm definitely allegedly. That's why I said allegedly. So, <laughs> it's hearsay. 
It is what it is. Move on. Uh, what's this? Oh, 50 Cent. That's from uh, New York and came down came down to uh, the South to get some of this cheap land. 50 Cent officially launches G-Unit Studios in Louisiana. Somebody said he's the male... <laughs> He's the male Tyler Perry. <laughs> wow. He's not the male. He's not the male Tyler Perry. He's the upstate. <laughs> they, Tyler say, Perry. they say he's the male Tyler Perry. So obviously I thought he was gonna open his uh studio in South Carolina one time. Nope. He opened it up in Shreveport. Louisiana. Uh he he did his finding your roots thing in South Carolina. I guess that's what obviously where his family's from. The uh, opening of studios in Shippenport will uh, aid in fostering talent, creating opportunities, and building a community that thrives through creativity and innovation. We're going to get to this later about this whole um, migration, Black American migration back down south thing. Uh, Kiva, Regina, you listening? How a lot of the jobs and opportunities are starting to, at least the black people who are creating these jobs and opportunities are going to the south. And so if you want them, you have to go to the south with him. Are you going to join us, Regina and Kifa, back to your southern roots? <laughs> Round of applause to Curtis, the real uh, businessman. No smoke and mirror are funny numbers. <laughs> <laughs> 50 Cent's television empire adds another point to the scoreboard with the official launch today. Black April Power. 18th, uh, of G Unit Studios in Shepherdport, Louisiana. As someone who has always believed in transformative power of music, <clears throat> excuse me, in television, film and television, I'm beyond excited to introduce the expansion of my G-Unit film and, and uh, television through the launch of G-Unit Studios right here in Shippenport. From the great, uh, gritty narratives of the streets to the uh, compelling stories that define our era, G-Unit will always been more than just entertainment. It is a platform for voices that need to be heard, stories that need to be told. Br bringing G-Unit Studios to Shippenport is not just a business decision. It is a commitment to fostering talent, creating opportunities, yada, yada, yada. We already said all that. Uh, let me just play this right quick. And to invest in the community itself to build what I would need to be able to execute what I got going with G-Unit Studios. It's going to create a lot of jobs. In Shreveport, my aim is to embody the spirit of conscious capitalism to focus on creating jobs. And you see what he said, conscious capitalism. We had that point. We talked about that before when we talked about capitalism and what it stands for. You have people that say, yeah, you should be able to make the money you earn. Well, there's a such thing as, um, I don't know, I forgot the word. When you're taking advantage of people, that type of capitalism is not the same as conscious capitalism where you're being careful to not try to be a monopoly and okay. control everything. I'm stimulating commerce and contributing to economic growth for this vibrant community. Our vision to make Shreveport a beacon of the entertainment industry. Yes, indeed. Let's go! A place where creativity yes, indeed. meets opportunity, where talent meets mentorship, and where amazing stories come to life that resonate globally. All right, so we got that. So uh, you support uh, 50 and his move to the... I support 50. He's bringing jobs to hopefully black people and maybe. in Shreveport. Shreveport, uh, Louisiana, not um, the others, the Cajuns. <laughs> Talk about them fucking Creoles, too. Oh, yeah. There's different sets in the Creole. The Creole thing is getting, <laughs> you know. Uh, regarding the alleged unappealing black actor for Romeo and Juliet, it's crazy how if you choose to watch TV, you observe ugly white folks, both genders, all day, all show, all movies with no uh, protest yet. Well, I think it's because... In I can make I could say it's particularly for black women because they feel like their ethnic image as far as being black women has always been kind of played down. How these companies kind of go out of their way <clears throat> to find what we what we considered unappealing black women to be a standard for black women. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. Funny how I have one I one heard a few people speak ill of Curtis as a businessman, young buck and the immigrants <laughs> <laughs> that got deported. Um, uh, I haven't heard anybody say did, uh, that uh, Fifty Cent is a slime ball businessman. I haven't heard that. I just know they say when you on his bad side, he is petty. And she he will said, go "Don't say, don't say for black people. It could be triggering for some. He's simply creating jobs for the community. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, he is a Booker T. Washington and not a W. E. Du Bois. Yeah, yeah. Well, W. E. Du Bois. Yeah, it Caribbean. Bad. It's funny. I, I remember we read that back and forth between um, what's the Pan African dude and name? White. Who? From Jamaica, 
Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey. Oh, versus don't w. even get me started on Marcus Garvey. Now they was going at each other. They called him a mulatto. He yeah, said. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know what? He moved to Ghana, I believe, at the end of his days. Yeah, he did. You where did you go to, Marcus Garvey? Nah, don't try to he defend went him to now. the he went to the UK. Don't try to defend him now. He never went. Who defend who? Um, I ain't defending any one of them. Don't compare him to those people. <laughs> wow. All right, let's get to this though, because there's some stuff going on. Um, I don't know if y'all are paying attention to this Kendrick Lamar uh, Drake. Well, you shot you kind of shouldn't because it is a distraction, but it is. If you get for some entertainment, but there is something coming out of it that isn't a distraction. Oh. The tiny it's, hats. It's clear that there's an, an agenda being pushed through one of these artists. So you see this article The Jewish here. rapper? <laughs> yeah, the tiny hat one. How a 23-year-old from L.A. fooled the internet with an AI Kendrick Lamar diss track. So this guy right here, he made a, a AI diss track, and people thought it was real. Um, of course it wasn't. So I don't have to play all of it. I want to play a snippet. Play snippet of it. Or at least him breaking down how he did it at least. Oh, shit. So this is him. Don't tell me. Yo, 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 Sai the Rapper here, and this is how I created the viral AI Kendrick Lamar diss track. Out of my name, three times in front of your mirror. You hesitate to proceed after you reconsider. Lights flicker, the energy in the room shifted. Scared to open your eyes, cause you feeling the ghost of Kendrick. Now first you gotta get a beat that sound like chaos and the world is ending. So this is a beat that I cooked up. <laughs> And you gotta write some lyrics and spit them the way that K Dot would write them and spit them. Utter my name three times in front of your mirror. You have to take them proceed after you reconsider. I know Kendrick Lamar likes to emphasize his T's. Party. He can T T party. So we gotta incorporate that. Grab your glocks when you see K Dot. See that hard T I was telling y'all about? Dot. Most people just say dot. He dot. As but not least, I gotta put my beat tag on it. Now let's listen to how the finished results sound. Yo, yo, right. yo. So you get that. All right. So that led people just to think that a lot of this stuff is AI. Oh, and that somebody is trying to push BBL AI. Drizzy. <laughs> somebody, somebody is trying to push AI into the mainstream. Yeah. Well, now there's another rapper named Rick Ross who started going at Drake. He called him BBL Drizzy because he believed that Drake had a BBL done and a tummy tuck and all this other stuff. It's just funny. So, go ahead. So th this AI is almost like Auto Tune. Only difference it, is exactly. It's but you can completely emulate another person. So this is the new version of Auto Tune, pretty much. So he put this right Mary here. Mary Vanilli out. out here. What I'm about to play is AI. This is not real, but you're gonna swerp it down. This is a song from the '80s or even the '70s. Okay. But this is AI. This is not BB, real. BBL Drizzy. <laughs> What up, Sun Kiss Sun? The guy. Fake rap. Fake rap beat. They all gay. Let's get to that. Yeah. <laughs> Now this sounds real. Who's making love to your old lady. <laughs> That's what I'm getting about. <laughs> Let me go ahead. What Shout out brilliant? to Brilliantly Me. Peace to the gods and goddesses and the fraud and the fraud and the fraudist. No, no, no. Go ahead. People have been saying AI had me thinking you simply type something to get all these effects. No, when you want to get something this sophisticated, somebody behind it has to actually say it. So that the uh, AI can actually follow your um, yep. vocal tones and all that. And other you got to get the cadence down. Yeah, if you get. Now with this Drake thing going on, and, th and I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna land a point. When Drake, um, Rick Ross started talking about Drake getting a nose job, I know this seems useless. Why are we talking about this? But immediately when he started talking about his nose job, mm. here come the tiny hat, latest rap rap beef raps in Drake, rhinoplasty and. I don't know how to say that last one. Pastrami. That's pastrami. Okay. From Tupac to Biggie to Jay-Z, Nas, the rap beef, the war, yada, yada, So basically in this article, they started making the point that it was anti-Semitic. But when Rick Ross said that, he said, you got your nose like your father. He yeah. didn't say anything about his mother. But they're making it out to be an anti-Semitic remark that he told her that he got a nose job. No, they have called him a Jewish rapper. Exactly. So like when Shakur Stevens came out and said he was a Puerto Rican boxer, <laughs> you are Puerto Rican. <laughs> 
Never will you be called a Negro again. Now look at it. It said the latest beef finds Jewish rapper Drake at the center of a rather unprecedented palon that some uh, observers believe is, it has anti-Semitic overtones when viewed when viewed against the backdrop of the Israel Hamas war and the spike in anti-Semitism incidents across the country. Now I found it funny that they found a way to bring the Israel Hamas now Israel Iran thing in. Oh, you mean that ninety that ninety something billion dollars they just gave mm-hmm. so, the Ukraine. Israel it, and Taiwan. So remember, remember that whole the old saying that's been attributed to some Jewish people where they said they don't never waste an opportunity to push your agenda. Yeah, they don't play. So even if this has nothing to do with this, they, they found a way to make themselves a part. They have a damn thing to do with that. Then you have this right here. It says latest rap beats, raps and Drake, Ryan Plants, da, da, da. And this one, they talked about the same thing, but they made like I said, they kept on saying it was anti-Semitic and how this needs to be addressed within the black community. Oh, a black people calling another black person nose big? But listen, in this article, good luck. They call Drake a black Jewish man. No, 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 no. He's a Jewish rapper. So, and the other one they just called him Jewish and this one they called him a black Jewish. Nope, he's just Jewish. So now I'm going to show this one right here. Now this article right here, let me go to this right here. This is Lucian Grange. This is the guy who runs everything. This came out earlier this year in January. It says, Inside the Music Industry's High Stakes AI Experiments. Okay, so there's a theory out there that Drake, one of the biggest artists in the world, has a lot more business dealings than we think. He's not just an artist. He is somebody who's being used as a lightning rod to make everything they want in the industry to pop or to flop. Well, you had a great theory. I think you said it like a couple months ago. Because of how Drake you kind of formed it like because Drake couldn't get accepted or couldn't do something. He's like, I'll destroy it all. Yeah. It's the, it's the, it's an African proverb. Yeah. I say that where whenever you don't accept the kid in the village, the kids will, the kid will return and burn the village down. Mm. So because you wouldn't accept me, I'm going to take all my influence and introduce anybody into hip hop who want to be brought in. I'm going to bring in uh, that. Uh, what's his name? Up on a Tuesday. That song. I'm going to bring in all these artists who I know can't rap, who I know aren't talented. And I'm gonna make them popular, savage. and I'm gonna change the sound of hip hop to what we know it's not. True, yeah. honorable. No such thing as as black Jewish. Leave us alone with this nonsense. Restore the titles to actual Africans. African Americans have nothing to do with this. <laughs> You're right. There should be no such thing as black Jewish because it's, it's like <laughs> it's it's just Jew. Yeah, Judah. Rap beeps. Uh, be publicity stunts. A cracker orchestrating. Then that's the point. D- they, some people believe this whole thing is a publicity stunt by these record labels. Because remember last year they said hip hop was falling. Oh, it is no definitely drawn a lot of attention back to hip hop. No, no got, number. You no, got R and B singers out here. No number <laughs> ones. You can't find nobody to drop a, a hit that's a hip hop record. It was a hip hop fifty, and it was the worst one of the worst years they had. And then yep. this year you get the three biggest artists to get into a back the and big forth. Three. You get the three biggest artists to get into a back and forth, which brings the numbers all the way up now. So, uh, If that's Drake's plan, it's not really working because they still have to get approval from the African-American community some way. Well, see, now we're talking about something different. It's no longer, Drake's agenda is not the same as what their agenda is. Drake just released another little freestyle where he introduced AI with Tupac and uh, Snoop Dogg, dissing Kendrick Lamar. And it's like he's normalizing... AI and hip hop. So it's not going to be extreme no more. The first song he released, people thought, people was wondering, is it AI or is it real? So it was AI. He's meant to blur the, line, blur the lines. So I don't have to read this article. I'm just telling you, the people at the top of the music industry want AI to become a thing, as y'all already know. So let me go to this next thing. And this made me think of something when I saw this. It says, Mary J. Bly's hints at final album. And I thought to myself, if AI becomes a thing and Mary J. Blige is about to do another album, remember, uh, what's her name? What's the woman that did the song that Beyonce just covered? Jolene? Jolene. Dolly Parton? Dolly Parton has like 140 albums, 200 albums or something. Something crazy. I can extend the artist's career forever with AI. Well, they're trying to extend it beyond death. So this album by Mary J. Blige, I can take her vocals from 1997 and put them on a song now. We'll listen to the vocals on her new album because they might be from 1995. And remember when they when when uh what's his name when Diddy released his album and Mary J. Blige was on the album, 
What did everybody keep saying? Man, this sound like prime Mary J. Blige. People kept saying that. This sound like Mary oh, they the heard on when, when she was being honored at BET and she was singing live. <laughs> they said this sound like Mary. This sound like Mary from the '90s. The hip hop celebration was bad because it centered immigrants in our narrative. Hit the like button. So I think this right here. I, I'm, I'm wondering what this album gonna sound like. Is it gonna be Mary at what is she fifty something? Yeah, she's fifty. Is it gonna be Mary at twenty something? We'll see. She looked good though. She looked good. Then this right here. I don't make Afro beats. Now this goes into a whole nother topic with AI. We were talking about last year how they're trying to make a global sound. They started pushing Afro beat. What's that uh, South African sound? You hear me? The what? South African sound? Uh, Papana, Afro Papana. I don't know how to say it, from, from, but yeah, I don't know how to say it properly, but yeah, that Afro beat and the reggae started getting a big buzz last year. They try to push all those sounds onto Black America, and it didn't work. No, it worked because now it you did? got Usher, Chris Brown, all them making all those type of sounds. But now. they're making it more like R and B. They want to blend it. So it's about making a global sound now. It's about combining hip hop with pop, hip hop, pop, R and B, country, Beyonce, country. Con- Beyonce bringing in the country part. And if you listen to that Beyonce album, she has pop, hip hop, all that stuff on that album. It's about mixing all the sounds now a to one pot. sound. Huh? A melting pot like the USA. So when he, when this dude right here said, I don't make Afro beats, I see the Africans were mad with him. But if you look at the article, he said, I make R&B, I do hip-hop, pop. He said right here, he said, Nigerian singer Fireboy has reiterated that his style of music is not Afro beats. He however said that his roots and identity are always in his music. He said, he said I, as I always said, I don't make Afro beats. I just sort of like combine stuff. I don't, def- uh, I don't do different, I, I do different kinds of music. So even when I'm making R&B or pop, you can hear the Yoruba factor. Mm-hmm. Mixing everything. Okay. Oh, so instead of them saying little, they they put boy in everything. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> we don't put boy. I wouldn't say. Why use uh Mary J. Blige for this topic? Whitney would have been a better example. How so? No, we, we're talking about somebody who's alive. Why why are you going in on Whitney right oh, now? Bet, I, I, I can give you an even better example. Mariah Carey. Yeah. She I, needed though. I can go get Mariah Carey from 1997. Whistling. Whistling. And I can make her present day album sound just like that. Yeah. Yeah, Mariah need uh, AI. And they've been already had it, like you said, with auto-tune, kind of. I already mm-hmm. had something similar to that, but now I could go even further. Love Mary J. Blige. The I Don't Make Afro Beats reminds me of the early Afro-Cubans who were upset uh, with their music being labeled Latin. I remember uh, I was on social media one time, and there was a, there was a, I guess it was a Nigerian dude who was going back and forth with a black American. And he said, listen, Afro Beats is going to take over the world. It's going to surpass <laughs> hip-hop. <laughs> And a Jamaican dude under his comment left a comment. He said, we said the same thing with reggae. <laughs> and what is Shana Paula? Shana Paula. He started making R&B pretty much. Yeah. So a lot of these West African... Hey, um, he... Go ahead. Shana Paul. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was a sathartic Jamaican dude. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was Mario... Uh, I can't say that last one. Creator of Afro, a Cuban jazz. He hated uh, that people were calling his music Latin jazz. Well, it's, it's music offshoot. That's what it's gonna be called. It's like some, it's like saying there's no such thing as a uh, funk in Brazil. It's, it's Brazilian funk, not just funk. It's Brazilian funk. You copying something that already. So he exists. just wanted it to be labeled jazz. Puerto Ricans identify heavily with black people. Yeah, some, not some of them don't. Some of them. Yeah. Um, I don't want them to. To be quite honest with you. <laughs> Cause then you'll have people like Honorable out here wanting to get them with the baby hair. Oh, shit. All right, let me play one more e- example of how this technology will work. Uh, let me just play this. I keep it good time. All right, hold on, y'all. I'm gonna play this. I keep it good time in the whip when you're ready to play. Let me know we can rock out. Tired of spamming you niggas. I see you in traffic, just know we gonna hop out. Hitting your bitch from the back, she in love with it. Too much dick, I make a tap out. I like him nasty, fuck me with passion. Ratchet bitch, I pull a track out. Damn. Keep a good time in the whip when you're ready to play. Let me know we can rock out. Rock out. Tired of spamming you niggas. I see you in traffic. Just know we gon' hop out. Uh-huh. Hitting your bitch from the bed. She in love with it. Too much dick. I make a tap out. I like them nasty. Fuck me with passion. Ratchet bitch. I put a check out. So, as you can see, he just completely changed that. The, the baby. And now I'm going to show you one more of this singing. I come back every single time. 
Feel so magnetic, yeah, we so alive. He sound like somebody. No matter who's wrong, we ain't switching sides. Never go hold you accountable, you got too much pride. Oh, no, no. He sound better than SZA. He didn't need to change the voice. Don't know how I come back every single time. Feel so magnetic, yeah, we so aligned. No matter who's wrong, we ain't switching sides. Then we go hold you accountable. You got too much pride. Oh, no, no. This so, yeah. Wow. This shit getting faster and faster how much it's working out. Now we got, we got some examples we want to share. Oh, here we go. <laughs> we went to the <laughs> website right here. And you can make your own. Oh, shit. Yeah. You can make your own version of this. Now, let me say this. Before we hear these, we are not professional. We did this in like like 10 minutes, More like an hour, 30. two hours ago. So yeah. we didn't do no cleaning it up. The beat is all off whack. It's it's not meant to sound good. Please don't judge us. <laughs> it's just meant to show how easy it is that even we can just hop on here and do this at a lower level, but it's possible. Let me play if this If we would have started this on Wednesday, this shit, this shit would have been lit. Let me show. Listen up on the tubes. We make it now, wet. This one here is an AI. Brandley mixed that with sort of all AI. It's all uh, a rap. Mm -hmm. All oh, this sorry. AI music yeah, yeah, stuff sorry, proves yeah. uh, that you already have to be creative, talented, and well studied and visual to play along with these tools. Exactly. Now, <laughs> this one right here is the one I did. <laughs> That's Kanye, uh, right? It's Kanye. It don't okay. like I said. Ours don't sound as good as that dude because he's actually an engineer. He has to do this. But you am gonna play this. Listen up on the tubes. We making waves. Black politics and culture. How we behave. Regina's voice echoes. Sienna brings the flair. Shantae's intellect. Kifa beyond compare. George drops the knowledge. Brilliant shine so bright. Mystery man's insight. Breaking through the night. From the streets to the screen. We dissect and reflect. Black issues. Our views. Perfect connect. Listen up. <laughs> Yeah. Fire, fire. <laughs> <laughs> now that was the one I did. The, that one right there was like three minutes. Mm. Three minutes. Not yes. doing no real mixing, nothing. Brilliantly, I knew he was gonna put fire. <laughs> Brilliantly shines. <laughs> fire. <laughs> that wasn't too bad. Look at George. Oh, you would say that, George. Let's see how you feel about the next one. Oh, cool. See, I didn't get I did, that was just eight Uncle, bars. Uncle, we got you. It's another one. We yeah. got you. That was just that was just a quick little eight one I did. Now Travis wanted a whole damn song. You damn right. He wrote a whole song oh. and wanted to do one. And we looking for uh we, the first voice we were gonna use was um J. Cole. J. Cole, but we couldn't get the rhythm right with him. Then we were gonna use Rick Ross. Rick Ross on. cadence, but he wasn't on there. So we had to do Tupac. So we did Tupac. Now listen, y'all. It's Rick, off If it beat. would have been Rick Ross, it would have been, <laughs> yeah, been the, fire. the beat. If we didn't record the beat, he had to go back and add the beat. Now listen. It is off beat. We know it's off beat. Oh, oh George's going to trash the shit out of this one. He's going to be like. <laughs> we, we, I, we we recorded it without a beat. and then we Don't say my name with J. Cole voice. <laughs> <laughs> you, was, on, you, was with, you was with Duke's song. <laughs> so yeah, I... Uh, it was, it's off beat because I we recorded it a cappella and then we just threw a beat behind it. So it's not, it's off beat, but y'all want y'all to get the point. All right, let's go. <laughs> we got you, Craig. This dude's always lurking like a ghost at night. She's been good in vibes, but it's acting tight. I know in his hell, always trying to throw shade. They be casing his hair, living like so afraid. Got a sidekick with him, thinking he's so bold. Counseling skills, nah, they just cold. Talking big, but no, he can't back it in the end. Lost in his own drama, steady trying to pretend. Mouth full of insults, but they lacking the punch. Can't solve his issues, always stuck in the crutch. Backing like he got something to show, but in this game, he just putting on the show. Cause so to judge the security, here's a truth for the drop. Stay in your lane, never reaching the top. Lead the counseling for those who know the deal. And it's rap, you a very, very small squeal. Georgia security, you can't even compete. When I'm close on the scene, man is always elite. Spitting fast, bringing the heat with up every show. You just in the background, always watching them grow. <laughs> yeah, ha ha ha. And while I'm at it, then to give a give a shout out, real quick, on Cold YouTube channel. <laughs> Got that content that's slick. <laughs> With knowledge, you know. 
they keep it, they keep it on point. Tune in, hit the subscribe. They just keep joining, so let me give a shout out to a long time watcher. Rosie May Smiles, Frig, Tricky Dre, the real ninjas. <laughs> Pussies. <laughs> oh, and let's not forget. Oh, and let's not forget. Mr. Eastwood. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes, Travis wrote a whole damn diss track towards George. <laughs> Travis decided to write a whole diss track to George. Oh god, which is the funny because fire, but I'm man, y'all me out of it. <laughs> Did y'all have the original beats? No, no, no. That beat, that's fire. that Rick Ross beat. Yeah. I, I hear a little Tupac. <laughs> Pussy, LOL. <laughs> okay, Rosie, okay. <laughs> Man, y'all. <laughs> uh, we on the mic. Let's that this is <laughs> I want Travis Dick to this track. <laughs> it was funny because uh, we didn't think. Uh, oh, what we'll, we'll uh, we'll uh, what the fuck TV. was that? <laughs> <laughs> It's funny because George said he wasn't going to be here this week. So we were going to drop it this week and, and next hope week. he came back in next week and he was going to be. I knew George was going to be. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I'm humbled. That was dope, though. So y'all uh, narrowed it down to three voices. Tupac, uh, Ross, and J. Cole. Strange parent. No. No, no. Originally, he wanted to use J. Cole just because we were just thinking of a random voice to use. It was just but was testing it. the cadence with the flow kind of went with, with with the song that Rick Ross yeah, the, the, put the, out. The champagne moments that Rick Ross just dropped against Drake, that's what we was mimicking. Uh, but then we, they didn't have his voice, so we just used Tupac because he raps slow. So, But yeah. it's supposed to be a, a J. Cole's beat. Uh, yeah. What's the name of it? A Seven Minute Drill. Seven Minute Drill. So, yeah. <laughs> Why y'all want to use Zesty Ross? Hell, George, they all Zesty. Yeah, they, I mean. I mean, didn't you hear what McCall said that earlier? Uh, Sun Kisses? Yeah. All right, now I want to show. Do I want, do I want to show this? This is a, uh, and I know, I forgot what his name. Uh, that's Jermaine Dupri. Jermaine Dupri. Right, we Did know Travis about... lick his lips to like Diddy went for ten to be Ross? <laughs> uh, no, I already had on some uh chapstick. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, I can hear Rick Ross. Yeah, that that was more so we we're trying to cover Rick Ross, but they didn't have his voice. So, right, let me play this by Jermaine Dupri. We know his history, but I want to get this little first ten seconds. I want to show something. What up? What up, yeah. Um, so today. I got a question. I know, you know, it's gonna have niggas mad at me and all that. You know, I'm getting on fuck about that. But anyway, um, this question is like, why do we keep having or keep allowing people from different backgrounds, people from different walks of life, different businesses and all that shit come in our business, the music business, and disrupt our business and then tell us that this is what we should be doing and we start moving by their rules. And then this is what's going to happen with AI. They're going to come into your shit, tell you, you should be using this, and you're going to stop doing it because that's the only way you're going to make money in the industry. Uh. It's an unfortunate cycle. Unfortunate. All right, go ahead. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, wow. Ross antics are hilarious. None of his Drake videos have made me want to listen to the actual music. Go look. Go look. Go listen to it. <laughs> oh, he got... Oh, he got ready because he knew he was going to sound moist. <laughs> I don't want to hear from dudes that wear dresses. <laughs> JD, uh, because black man, that's the answer. Get your money, black man. Get your money. Get your money, Get your money black man. <laughs> that's that, uh, what's it called a song? Yeah, uh, but yeah, I, I just want to show that, uh, that the top Did of the he have an entire has... label or record company? Who you talking about? Jermaine Dupri. Well, so, 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 so dead. dead. Yeah. But see... He's a he's a little small company, and the big dogs come in and change the rules. When the, when the big dogs came in and said we're not doing regular record sales no more, we're doing streaming. Guess what? Everybody started doing streaming. So it is what it is. All right, let me show this. Speaking of Israel and how they're connecting this to the Drake situation, trying to garner more support, muted reactions to Israeli strikes on Iran hit at hint at this de escalation. So obviously, Iran allegedly sent some. Uh, drones to Israel. Israel intercepted some of them. Some of them landed. Israel sent something back. Iran is saying we didn't get hit at all. They lying. Israel is saying we did. 
So now they can everybody can just wipe their hands and walk away now. They should at least. But we know it's not how it's gonna go. Mm-mm. Oil prices ease as Iran downplays tax. Are so, they downplaying the tax? Whatever they're saying, Iran is saying we ain't get hit. I, I, Iran's not scared. Exactly. They ain't do nothing. We, so somebody nothing. lying. <laughs> and Israel's saying we did. We hit this place and that place, mm-hmm. this and that. So maybe yeah. you hit Palestine again. <laughs> and Honorable also, supports P. Diddy parties because she wants black men to become zesty for the bag. <laughs> he dropped the ball with Janet. Uh, did Jermaine drop the ball with Janet? Janet been dropping a ball on niggas for a long time. She <laughs> dropped the ball on uh, Bobby Brown. Uh, Jermaine, the first time, she wanted to go have an, uh, an Arab baby. Mm-hmm. but She wanted an Arab baby. Mm-hmm. Instead of getting shitted on, he dropped something in her. Those- Shaking my head. No black man gets uh, that honest money. No, that didn't tell no body money. Uh, Israel uh, respects nobody but Israel. Exactly. That's true. JD let uh, Jay Z uh, trick him out of the NFL deal. He's not really the the guy we need to be listening to. On top of that, horrible cash grab, uh, mockery. Yeah. Now no, this what mockumentary? Yeah, I guess documentary mockumentary. Yeah. Uh, facts honorable. That was sad. Oh, you talking about uh, Freak Nick? Janet has us. Uh, Janet has uh, submitting to her. Her black father's wishes for a long time, and that was to stay from. That's true. I said that. <laughs> That's true. They. I said that last week. The word on the street was her father didn't want none of his kids to be with, um, black people. But Reby got One. a black man. Janet Janet dropped the ball on yeah, Elder Bars. That's a white man. Now I'm not. This right here is a voting for basically the U.S. just once again voted against Palestine being allowed to be a part of the UN, United Nations. So once again, they're not allowing Palestine to be have a representative True. on this. So they're still going to allow them to be de- dealing with what they're dealing with. I'm only bringing it up because they're trying to trigger, use hip hop and black people to make these type of things. Okay. Uh, did you see this right here? Four dead in UAE, Dubai uh, airport still dis- disrupted after storm. I saw it. There's a storm going on in Dubai. Damn come, right. The yeah. barge is mixed. He don't count as black. Bobby Brown, he qualifies. <laughs> you sure regarding Janet? Uh, Daddy Joe did make her kick the bars to the curb. He wasn't a black man. <laughs> uh, the bars was the one beating on her the most. Mm, well, I don't know that. They ain't in my business. I don't know. But all alleged. we forget that Dubai is literally a country that was built in the desert. Yeah. And they remember they have those islands out there that they they created. That that shit being got shut down. So you see these storms flooding that's going on over there. Oh, and people saying pray for Dubai. And somebody people say, man, fuck Dubai. All this water. Yeah, there's a lot of flooding going. Is this over a there. blessing or a cursing? I don't know. You see how high it is. So people saying pray for Dubai. I'm like, that ain't none of my business. Wait. Well, that's for shitting on people. <laughs> Flying on defecating on people for money. <laughs> Speaking of that, my manager just got back from Dubai. She was gone for a week. He be, he be talking. Y'all understand? I don't know what she went to Dubai for, but she came back with some nice clothes. Oh yeah, good. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, uh when clouds uh seating uh goes wrong, we do know that the same way Dubai has been creating these fake islands, like you said, they also using the weather machines. I can't say his name, but he's from Bellevue. <laughs> He's, yeah. he's buying a lot of farming. I Guess wish y'all, who? I wish y'all could know how much he be talking shit about you. How, tra- how much Travis be talking shit about his uh, manager too? <laughs> he be talking uh, shit about him. Not forgetting anything, Dubai told us <laughs> that they have nothing but uh, good leadership. She got <laughs> shit at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. Yeah, she mustered up the money to go to Dubai, and she came back with some nice clothes. Had a some new uh, poetic justice braids. Oh, look. I was oh, like, damn. The, the, well, she the, had to wash I'll, it out. She had to change those other braids. Hold on, excuse my language. But we know when a when a woman goes on vacation, gets and she braids, gets the braids. It's called fucking braids. <laughs> well, over there, shit them braids. <laughs> I was thinking the same regarding Dubai and weather machines. Yeah, I think so. I think Dubai is uh, definitely one of those companies that you because he's stuff. jealous. She tells him what to do. Hmm. Does she tell me what to do? Does only, she have as much power as she thinks she has, George? If y'all only knew. Uh, they built Dubai up, but now down to uh, drainage and sewage. Travis will never be on her level. <laughs> You're right. I don't want to go get shitted on. 
All right, look at this. Now, I know we're bringing Diddy back into this, but I'm bringing Diddy, Diddy into this to somewhat continue the AI situation. Diddy producer alleges UMG boss Lucian Grange knew or should have known about Spike's drinks uh, and new sexual assault also. Now, obviously, this is early this year in January. And bringing Lucian Grange back up, he's the same one that was pushing AI and all that other stuff. But he ain't the only one. I want to show this. Sean claims he was Diddy's fall guy in 1999 club nightclub shooting. Uh, let me play the video right here. It opens wounds um, when you hear, um, you know, the wow. victim saying that it wow, was Mark. <laughs> Diddy that shot her. That is what is the most remarkable. Oh, you didn't see that? I saw it. Okay. And that was... And pause for a second. I saw somebody say this and I agree. Did we know Sean had an accent? Uh, no, I never really heard it. So he didn't start using his accent so he got to his uh, to home police. country. More bussy news. <laughs> Oh, Sean's bussy. <laughs> what is the what is this voice? Yeah, he used to, he's from New York. I thought he was. You well, know, he well he's been there for a while, so maybe he's yeah, taking I, on the accent there. Yeah. Sean, we don't uh, reverse deportation. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Damn. Joe Jackson didn't want Janet to swallow when it comes to the brothers. Well, have mercy. Well, no, she did. He did want her to swallow because he didn't want her to reproduce with more blacks. <laughs> oh yeah, she would. So she was swallowing. We'll get support black. Yeah, she said, Wilkins support and my manager, it feels strange. It's triggered by a lawsuit from a <laughs> producer that produced on the Love album who is making accusations. And in those accusations, he says that the gentleman confessed to the shooting. And that is what stands out to me the most because, you know, I've who done my best man? to put it behind me. This is uh, Sean, former artist for Diddy, the one who allegedly took the... Uh, I think he got one hit song. Yeah, he took the, he took the hit for Diddy in a shooting that happened back in the a day. A nightclub when, where J-Lo, when J-Lo was present in that nightclub? Yeah, and he went to prison for a couple years and he got out and took his ass to Belize and became president. Well, let's tell the real story. Diddy gave... He did had some money waiting for him. Yeah, when he got out, some money was waiting Look for him. Look at Honorable. Are those weed lips? <laughs> now, you know you like your set of weed lips. <laughs> who is this man? I think Diddy and Trump consumes 80% or more of the headlines. Definitely the last three months or so. No question. Well, that to- ends when Kanye decides to disappear. And he just got back into the beef as well. He just made a, made a remix to like that. So There's some big jokers out there. Move forward. Uh, and so, um, but it certainly reopens the wounds that I've been saying this all along. Everyone knew all along that I was the fall guy. Um, but my political enemies and you know, detractors try to make me into, you know, this criminal. Oh, he faking his um, accent. But everyone knew that I was a young kid that took the fall. Everyone knew that. that. His yeah. biggest song is Bad Boys. Yeah, I think he's trying to paint this as a more political thing for his... Uh, That's a fake accent. Yeah, his political rivals. Uh, I think he's trying to paint this as a... See, I, was, I didn't really do a crime. I didn't really shoot somebody. I took a fall for someone. This is political, what she's doing. Now, the I'm not saying shot. he did or didn't take a uh, fall, but this is political. Well, they contacted him. Yeah. This is a this is a Diddy shakedown. The only <laughs> See, shine like, record I know they... is Usher confessing uh, remix, nothing else. All right. Um... His mouth didn't look like that back in the days. Well, he smoked more weed now. True. B&W Freemason rituals. All right, let me play this clip right here now. See, like when Diddy fucked Carl, Carl Winslow, we was at the party. <laughs> uh-huh. And you know, we just chilling and shit like that. And me, he up my and, childhood and, when he told me every, that. Everybody know me, right? Right. I'm a I'm a goofy oh, nigga. Man. I'm funny and stuff like yeah. that. So I hear a nigga just wearing out some shit. I'm like, huh? <laughs> like hearing that, I'm like, on six oh, who's wearing this bitch out? Right. Nigga, I kick in the door. Boom. <laughs> kick in the door. Nigga, I seen. I looked. I seen Carl Winslow. Put yeah, his that's head the father. Up. Ain't that the father from oh, like, from Family Matters? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No way. Oh, oh, no way. The dad. Oh, the dad. The dad. The dad. The dad. I swear to God, dead homies, neighborhood <laughs> crib. So when I see, wow. I see, I seen that, no. and then so who who was piping Carl? Uh, Diddy? Yeah, Diddy yeah. was. Who piping Carl? That, that piping Carl? question Carl? was crazy. He said, "Who was piping Carl? Carl? Come on, that's nasty, right? You Pugs. know what? All the father figures on um TV. Yeah, I mean Phil from. Fresh Prince of Bel Air. 
So when when, when I see Lord. when I seen that cuz right, <laughs> Diddy came back and he he was telling me he was like it's nothing more enjoyable than having a man do something for some money. I'm like, cuz that shit crazy. Oh, no. I said George Jefferson too yesterday. Bro, will that bro will dad from Fresh Prince is like that George Jefferson like that, but not Carl. <laughs> so everyone feeling comfortable playing with Diddy name sue them all. I will say this. I do think this is like one of those stories you think this where is embellished. Yeah, somebody just kind of sitting around and now it's just a situation where you're just telling stories just to tell them. Well, Diddy did say after all of this that he was going to um, sue if he live. Yeah, if he live. To see. <laughs> I Allegedly, this not even a real Diddy walking around. This is a clone, but um, <laughs> look at Joe. He really sad about that. Carl. <laughs> all right, let me play this one right here. Now, DJ Academics sat down with Donald Trump Jr. And somehow, I guess, Diddy became a part of the conversation, and they spoke on it. It's a hit job. It's I used lies. to get invited Call to the cool person parties. Diddy. I was there. Did you ever right? hear like, anything? Not, not those parts. So not me directly, but it's my, my ex-wife, actually, was, she was a model in New York, and like she was really good friends with Kim Porter, mm. uh, who was Diddy's wife. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, one yeah. who died at 47 from pneumonia. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that's and what they when said. that happened, she goes, she called me. And this was, what, a couple, I guess, a couple years ago now. Uh, Maybe not even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a, couple a couple years ago. And she called me like, something's up with that. I go, what, what do you mean? She's like, oh, dude, Kim used to tell me like, it was a bad, it was a bad, like there's a lot of weird shit that I didn't even know that like, but they were like, you know, they do photos. Donald Trump Jr. is a coke head. And like, <laughs> it's so obvious the dude's on coke bad. So Kim Porter was out here telling all these people what was going on with Diddy. But wasn't getting away from but him. But Diddy felt comfortable taking her out. That don't really make no this sense. This making sense. Um, all or many of the black father figures on TV are either zesty and interracial marriages are worse. Pedos, I said that about James Evans from Good Times. He was in a, in real life, he was in an interracial relationship. We have not had good representation. Now, we can give a shout out to my wife and kids. Um, Damon, he was with a black woman on the TV show and he was with... Chris Rock was too, wasn't he? Uh, Chris Rock? You talking about Tyler? You talking about... T uh, he was a black man. Cruz. Talking about the Cruz dude. You talking about um everybody yeah. hates Chris? Yeah. Well, his wife. What? She's a biracial. Is she? Yeah, she's biracial. Oh, she's not a Creole, is she? <laughs> All right, go ahead. Oh, Bernie Mac. Bernie Mac. Yes, Bernie Mac. Let's get Bernie Mac his. <laughs> let's get Bernie Mac his uh <clears throat> good. <laughs> Bernie Mac was good. Keep your enemies closer. Uh, the whites still thinking they can use immigrants to control black American narratives is hilarious. Why did they uh, interview? Why did the interview take place? Could they going to anybody get an interview about Diddy right now? Interracial relationships has always been the black man's cover story. Bullshit. That's bullshit. Go ahead, dude. That is Let her know what's bull up. Hell no. Hell no. We can go back as far as you ready to slaughter the late 1800s. That's nowhere near. The Let me ask you a question. Go look up a book. Any book. Interracial dating book and tell me who wrote it. Talk about cover story. Look up any interracial book and tell me who wrote it. <laughs> who buys it? Exactly. A TV show about interracial dating. Who watching it? Chris Rock was married to a sister producing two beautiful black girls. Mm -hmm. We talking about Terry Crews. Yeah, but yeah, any movie, book, anything. Tell me who wrote it. And tell me who watched Listen, it. Listen, this is not a, a bashing session for all right, black let's move on then. All right, all right, all right, all right. Females. shoots together or whatever they were they were sort of friendly like, they'd, they'd hang out like we yeah, him too pops from the wayne brothers see him out downtown and like i'd hang out with her not so much with i think it was already sort of over there but like she was really afraid of him and it really yeah like this goes back years and so like now this right here is where it becomes narrative and agenda uh once again if you're, if you're afraid of somebody and somebody's abusing you and you're telling people no one says she anything was having now i get it powerful man in the industry can't say nothing because you know you don't know what's gonna happen. But come on, man, it's alleged that he did, he he started working with the CIA in 1994 or yeah. five. I Diddy. get to that. Hold on. These conversations with my ex, I was like, uh, like I, I don't know what. Like I'm tired of hearing this coat here. Let me move on. That's a Clive Davis. That is yeah, alleged. That's, that's... That is alleged that he's a coke head. All right, go oh, ahead. Yeah. We can go back to what black men were doing right after the emancipation, chasing white men, getting caught with silk having drag parties, 
Let's take it back. All right, let me ask you a or question. Bite. How many black women you know in South Carolina that had slave plantations given to them by their white husbands? Let's get let's talk about it, Anna. Let's talk about it. See, I got facts too. I don't know what you're talking about, the drag party. You on something else. I can show you black women who took over plantations owned by Caucasian men, their white husbands. I could tell you stories about Caucasian men because they were not allowed to get married to black women. They would literally buy a house next to their house for their black wife. That's not African American. That's uh, Creole's bullshit. No, 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 no. We're not doing that. Nope, nope. I'm not talking about no mulattoes. No. Black women. But anyway. The nope. Creole mutts. <laughs> bullshit. Nope, nope, nope. Let's get back to this, though. That's, that's the monster. And... The, the the head of Universal Music Group. What's this motherfucker's name? Posted. See, see? he's <laughs> receipt. Uh, put Diddy receipt. Up and, and they, Run they, it. They they, they sacrifice. You saying post them and you ain't really want that smoke. You ain't really want that smoke. I, I think she do. <laughs> you think she do? Yeah, she do. <laughs> All right, let, let me get through this record. Hold Price on. And Diddy, they, they said, nigga, you gotta take this shit because we ain't we 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 can't be involved. But Diddy smart. He filmed every fuck session. So he was fucking Clyde and the motherfucking <laughs> and freak boy that run uh, Universal Music Group. So he got them on some fuck tapes. Now that's why they raiding the house because they got friends in Homeland Security and the feds. And they said, get, get there and get them tapes from this nigga. He trying to blackmail us. That's what I believe is going on. And you talked about this with Larry Gilder. He said this. How Diddy is. has a bunch of tapes. Diddy has over a thousand tapes of politicians, celebrities, athletes, you maybe your mama and father. He has everybody. Honorable Sienna, I do. <laughs> Learn me today, motherfucker. She Did said, you? I'm open to being taught about my people any day. Hey, look, look, no, no, I'm, Ooh, look okay. at her being so uh, soft right there. Oh, so that's what they got, the soft lights, what they call it? <laughs> Right, That's play. that pick me energy. Now this is something I got from uh, Kifa, Kifa sent this. Oh, um, speaking of a pick me, shout out to Kifa. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, she oh, sent this, wow. and this was an interview that Suge Knight did with uh, I forgot his name, but he, Suge Knight did his interview where he spoke on the situation. You by any chance before we get started? Wow. Did you ever have a chance to watch <laughs> the Cat Williams podcast with Shay Shay? You've never with... seen any of these tapes. Like Hillary email. Still ain't seen her email. Still ain't seen him. Shannon Sharp, did you watch the Shut whole it. thing? <laughs> well, number one, you know, best family. But at the same time, no, nah, I'm in the penitentiary. Watch that. But I heard about it like the Wait whole world did. I heard it was a great interview. Now, let me ask you, Shug, your experience with Kat. If you were, if for the audience, you and Kat have hung out, who is Kat to you? Is he a stand-up guy, good friend, relationship guy that you could trust? No, oh, I can trust him. Okay. And I don't say that about too many people, but at the same time. <laughs> okay. Okay. He said, I don't say that about too many people, but I could trust them. In 2024, it's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. T.G. Jakes, any of them, the, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, and, and anyone who takes that the wrong way <clears throat> know why they take it the wrong way. Now, when, when this came out, he went after... You know, uh, uh, Diddy, he went after TDG. He went after a lot of people in the space. Had you, Kat, and Diddy, had, did you guys ever party together, three of you guys? I know you and Diddy spent some time together, but did you, Kat, and Diddy ever hey, spend hey, time together? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to this. I'm not going to say I never had a threesome. I uh, damn sure ain't had no threesome with no men. So you talking about <laughs> having me and... All right, let me fast forward some of this. I'm going to get to... We can kind of summarize it. I, I want to get to a particular part I want to show. Hold on. Uh, hold on. It's the part where he was talking about the Clive Davis and all them. When he was yeah, he going to the top pussy. of the food chain. We had no reason to be hanging out. We ain't hanging out. The most important thing about this is that with me, you got some people who have a opinion on something either they weren't a part of or they weren't there. And I never want to be that type of person because you know it's only so many people who was around who had Tupac or seen Tupac or talked to Tupac. He was doing security when all went bad. So I don't, I don't like to speculate. So I just tell the truth how it is. With obviously other peers, did you notice anything around Diddy where you said this is a little bit, you know, obviously 
there's a woman, you're having a good time, you're partying, you're doing your thing. But did you ever see anything where it was out of line where you said, I think this guy likes men or I think he likes certain things that's a little weird? Well, well all due respect to Puffy, you got to realize one thing. He didn't start off like that. I'm quite sure somebody taught him that. And that's more got deep it. in the industry. You guys who got involved with a lot of people who were their mentors, instead of having mentor. a guy to mentor your own father, they was a mentor or tour mentor. That's exactly right. That's where it comes from. Nothing burger. And when that happened in the <laughs> industry, they, it was done to them, they do to the next person. So I feel Same thing as the uh, Catholic Church. So the puppy was a regular, normal guy. And then when he started hanging with the guys in the industry, they <clears> did things to him. And then allegedly, he did things to Usher. It goes on and on. But we got to stop this pointing the finger at the person who gets caught with their hands in the cookie jar. <laughs> Where did it start from? But see, if people don't want to touch all those angles that just started being in major uh, executives who run these labels. So you guys want to speak on the people who got thrown on the bus to sacrifice the lamb. Okay. Well, that's actually very insightful. Who was Diddy's mentor? We know some of the big names. I'm just curious if you have any names. You don't seem like uh, somebody. Uh, well, well number, number one was Clyde Davis. And you got to understand one thing. If Death Row, when I started Death Row, you got to remember one thing. I didn't have no co founder and nobody else. So I started that company on my own and grabbed Dr. Dre. Clive Davis, you see right here? <clears throat> Davis was born in Brooklyn, New York City, to Jewish parents. They all Jewish. Clive Davis. At the end of the day, it looked like this. When you have, uh, say, Universal is one big company. Doug Morris is the man at the time. Jimmy Iovine's in. If Another Doug Jew. Morris give Tuffy a deal worth a whole lot of money, and the album's been recouped. Otherwise, basically, like flop and recoup. They're not going to give you no new money if they don't recoup that. So he's basically said, all these people you keep keep talking about Diddy, you need to talk about Clive Davis and Morris and Jimmy Iovine. These people are the ones who are really doing the sick stuff behind the industry and normalizing it for the rest of the people that come into the industry. But that doesn't mean that people have to uh, to accept it, to go along with it, I to agree. play into it. They still have to be held accountable. Exactly. Honorable Cena said, I hate this man. Were you talking about the, the podcast host or were you talking about Suge? All folk ain't kin folk and white hoes ain't honorable ain't one of them. Talking about black men every chance they get like black hoes are meek and mild and innocent and role models. Fuck that. Fuck that the black community don't own you or fuck with you. <laughs> I wish the people would have allowed for the government to go after Diddy. Social media seems to be working overtime for Mexicans, West Indian, Filipino women. <laughs> it shook blaming the dead for Diddy's behavior. Let Harold uh, rest. Uh, what do the Jewish men know about Af Black American men that we uh, we are missing as a community? The host. Well, I could say leadership is definitely missing. No question. Leadership is missing. The gates thereof language, as it says. Now let's move on to something else. Wilkins, you married to a black woman, right? <laughs> Not vulnerable. <laughs> That's a rhetorical question, right? All right, let me show this right here. Uh, you see this girl? He said, just bought an early morning flight wearing my MIT gear. A seatmate looked at me and asked, basketball? I said, no, engineering. What about me prompting <laughs> him to think I was playing or coaching basketball? Oh, you got an example. What is your belief about the stereotype stereotyping of black men? Because that's what's promoted in the black community. Well, we know that part, but I'm so talking about celebrity, uh, being an athlete. We don't really promote um, engineering, uh, being a doctor, but, uh, and other. Well, the question I'm asking is occupations. Should he feel disrespected slighted. or slighted? Uh, well, if, if if he feels like I'm brilliant, I'm beyond that. Well, he goes me, to MIT. He, he's a he's a uh, um, he went to MIT. That's so a he very, feels like I'm I'm intelligent. I'm brilliant. Why would you assume, lower me to an athlete? Why would you assume that I only went to this school because? It's because I'm a black man. Because I because I play sports. You think I only went to this school because so of sports? So yes, it was an insult to him. Well, he went on the internet and complained and said, "What about that made him think that?" And it's like, well, you know why? Because you're black. That's his assumption is always going to be that. That's your ethnic image: the athlete, the performer, the entertainer. Yeah. Well, 
He basically said he didn't recoup uh, recoup that front money or or make new money. So his time was up. Dope boy move. Well, no, the argument that Shield kept making was that he's the only person who made his money who without drugs who built his company legit. He said how no limit cash money. Um, uh, Diddy. Diddy's uh, bad boys. Bad boy. No, the other one. What's the one? Jay Z, Rockefeller. All those were admittedly said that they built their companies off drug, drug money. money. And he said, I'm the only one who was legit. He said he went to a bank. I went to a bank and got loans. <laughs> uh, I had to. I had to respond to this victim. I hate this commentary from black men like him. Well, what's your problem with him making the argument that I'm only seen as one thing in this society? I mean, he's right. Okay. Who is obligated to promote different types of black men where uh, there are no other roles? Well, it's black men's job to change their ethnic image. I agree with that. My problem is black. I'm not reading that. Right, yeah, you do. You tripping. <laughs> what in the shit? Now, speaking of culture, because that's a cultural qu question he's asking about the assumption that because he went to MIT and he's black, that's probably because of sports, whether he's coaching or he's a former, former player. That's a culture question. They're limiting him. What does black culture present to the public? Flashiness. Yeah. Uh, that's what it presents. So now I want to show this. Speaking of entertainers, do, 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 do. we're talking about black culture. This was the streamer Kasanat, and he went... He got a lot of people angry when he went to uh, Jamaica and was, quote unquote, making a mockery of their culture, they said. And then they came to the understanding that he is not black American. He is Caribbean. And this is what he had to say. 50, you're black. You're not Trinidadian. You're not Jamaican. You're not African. You're not. You're not. Word. You're not Ghanaian. Yeah, they are. I'm not going to say too much because every time I choose to speak on how people outside of America view black Americans as uncultured and we are this and we are that. Okay. It's like, I, I can't say it because y'all don't think it happens. And then here it is. The person that all these black Americans support and big up and love on and, and everything. This is what he thinks of you. You're an uncultured swine. <laughs> and you you were sitting up watching the stream all day you you so you get her point where she's going with this i want to show this one though. i don't take niggas like that seriously i don't take a nigga who's sitting right here and literally made african-american culture i will say i find it funny how most of the people who responded were black uh girls that responded to him oh they're lying this lamer <laughs> fucking I, some black dude a black, black dude did respond to him show that one seriously like you you literally built a lightweight off of advertising african-american culture to white people and they run it to the ground and make the sh parts of our shit lame like i'm not really taking this nigga seriously i'm really not i just I, all i ask is stop participating in our culture give our shit back rep trendy culture all the way through and through rep trendy culture all the way through and through and leave the cultures that you say we don't have a fuck to own but he won't he simply won't niggas niggas will talk shit but won't leave the shit that makes the money alone that's Damn the thing. Right. That's, that's like, I don't. I don't take y'all niggas seriously. <laughs> don't take them niggas seriously. Who say we don't have cold? Ma'am, ma'am, excuse me, ma'am. E excuse me, ma'am, ma'am. You seen the clip and didn't do no research, ma'am. Me and my chat have arguments every single day. I was trolling, ma'am. Have you clicked the stream ever? I bet you do be watching. <laughs> no cap. And you and you probably watch, ma'am. Second of all. I'm very proud of being African American. I well, obviously we got culture. That's why that term got to go. He said we African American. But I want to show this is the last part I want to show on this. Uh, this this is another streamer. I probably seen him he before. His name is Duke Dennis. Uh, and he had a response to the backlash the other dude got. Black content creators, listen. AMP is a all black content group. You know what I'm saying? But I am the only black one in the group. He just hit me out. I'm the only black one in the group. You know what I'm saying? Like every AMP member besides me is attached to some type of like other, you know what I'm saying, group, ethnicity, group, race, or whatever the case may be. Like for example, Agent Ethiopian, he really from Canada, Toronto. He not black like me. I'm African American black. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I I love being black, African American black. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
Phantom, he Dominican. Kai, he Trinidad, he him. Chris <laughs> is Nigerian. And even Davis, he something. I forgot what the fuck it was. <laughs> something. <laughs> something. So, so he went on to say oh. how he's very proud of being black American, how all these other groups copy and all that stuff. Now, in the streamer world, that's a big deal because he's one of the more popular streamers. So I wanted them to create any dissension amongst their group. Probably so. Something like that. Go ahead. I hear this a lot. Black men claim I'm in a nice neighborhood in an expensive car and they think I'm a ball player or drug dealer. Whose fault is that? The bottom getting blamed for everything. Why do high value boule get called out for hiding in plain sight? Anyone outside of America, that's why my uh, reparations just suck it. Uh, this is this is Trinity culture, Haitian culture. What is anyone uh, anyone a culture uh, if we don't have one? Uh, these people sound like they don't travel abroad much. Any hoes that think a black man should support them and pay them pay their bills and worship them and only bring them leg and drama to the table can bite me. It's nothing uh, to build from if you unstable. George. <laughs> All right, I want to play another clip. Speaking of, once again, keep it on the culture topic. Uh, Yvette Carnell went on a show with Mark Lamont Hill. He has a, well, he has a night podcast, right? Or yeah, night, night school. It's called Night School. Follow the social media. Uh, I'm going to play what she said when she went on there. She also just went on Queen's Flip podcast. I knew he was, I knew he was trying to get He's trying to interview. get some attention. He wants to go viral. He's trying to get some attention with her, but yeah. Hey, I don't understand why black people are trying to block other black people. Right. I say I'm a Pan-Africanist and I think it's extremely um, it's an extremely narrow view to act as if black people from the Caribbean weren't enslaved. It means that they should take a comparative slavery class so they understand. Um, it means that they don't understand what was lost to by continental Africans when our foremothers and forefathers were taken from villages. Right. Um, but let me just say that I think that she gave you I think that she gave you an unserious answer. Right. Um, because every other group decides who are our people and it doesn't include every 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 black person in the world. Right. There is. And the Supreme Court has told us, listen, you have to tie this back to a specific harm. They've been very clear. This is the Supreme Court telling you we're not doing this. So the problem for me, one of the problems for me is how hard headed Pan-Africanists are. I believe that Pan-Africanism has become a religion as opposed to a kind of um, anything, any kind of political outlook that has any kind of uh, proof of concept. And I believe the person that is blocking reparations for ADOS are people like her who are saying, regardless of what the Supreme Court is telling me, regardless of what makes sense, re everything has to have a criteria. Like you don't walk into something and say, it's for everybody. No, even when you have a lawsuit, you say, who was harmed? Who was in the car? You don't say, well, you know, everybody else was harmed in some kind of way by traffic. Right. That's not the kind of conversation we're having It's I, I, I honestly feel like Pan-Africans are holding the reparations for ADOS hostage because you, you walk they around are. now, you see Ron Daniels and local reparations. And he said it has to be for all black people. And everybody is telling you that that does not make sense. Even other countries are telling you that, like, what you're doing does not make any sense. All Africans are not my people in the sense of, you know, it's, it's interesting to me. You can go to Africa and they'll have it's 54 countries, hundreds and hundreds of tribes. Right. Like they don't even have unity on the continent, but you are willing to 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 stand in the way of my reparations oh, in order reparations. for me uh. to have some type of connectivity <laughs> and relationship to people that I don't it's have a relationship with. Hold on, brilliant. It's a much. Yeah, she's talking about reparations. It's actually about separation. I'm when I whenever I talk about this stuff, I'm talking about delineation in general. I always keep saying it, I'm keep saying it. You need separation before you have unity. Now, that's you whole, need to figure out who's who. Now, on a three-dimensional level, that's talking about something totally different. It has nothing to do with none of this stuff, but we don't really get into that typically. But it's it's about the separation to create the unity is what I'm going to keep saying. That's the same as telling me I should have a relationship with somebody from Ecuador or somebody from Yugoslavia. Listen, we these are separate countries. A lot of these countries don't even have good relationships. A lot of tribes don't have good relationships. So she went on there. She had she was cooking. Um What? Uh, Wilkins, I need devotion. Does that make me any hoe? <laughs> a lot of this started happening when we decided to delineate from African diaspora. These hoes always run into Cody, Raheem, Rhodes, and still get a support from the black community. Fuck out of here. That's why the community is messed up today. Good interview. She's on Queen's Clip. Her on.
because you Chop. So from 1820 to 1864, about 11, 11,000 to 12,000 free black people and those who were formerly enslaved uh, migrated to Libya, immigrated to Libya, Liberia. Mm -hmm. So oh, pause, this, pause, 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 pause. Oh, wow. Let us know when we're good. I thought we were good while ago. Let us know when we're good. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, when I tell the truth about Honorable, shit happens. <laughs> All right, so you were saying that only 11, 12,000 people, black Americans, went to Liberia. From 1820 to 1864, 11 to 12,000 people. That's a lot of people. But that was what? That was a hundred over 150 years ago. So if 12,000 people go somewhere, which, how many people you think come from those 12,000 people? And but you, I'm pretty sure they've inter uh, the breed. descendants. But you don't, so you don't think that 12,000 people could have got washed out by all those people in that country? Well, how you know they didn't keep some type of... Uh, so do you know any separate, do you know any African Americans living in a separate community in Liberia? No. I have, I have employees that are Liberian. I've never heard of them talking about how they have, there's a separate black American community that lives in Liberia. That's not, Matter of fact, when they come over here, they said they don't know any history, which you, we know, you know they, they be lying. lying. They don't know no history about Point of matter Americans. is, we know there's a Brazilian community in, uh, in Nigeria from when the descendants of the Brazilian slaves went back to Nigeria. We know that because they've come out and said that. I'm saying no I'm black American sure, community has come out and said that in Liberia. I, I'm pretty sure if we look at it, I'm pretty sure there is one. Same way the, there's a the one in Latin America... I think it's Colombia. They call themselves Black American, African American. They still walk around with the, with the Black American, well, with the uh, American flag, everything. Those people also said that they have not, uh, they are not intertwined with other people. They, they are still lying. African American. They clearly lie or else it's incest. Well, it depends on how many went there. The 12,000 people, you'll be all right. Were they all related it or were they? The point of the matter is, if you're, not, if, if you're not going to accept, and this is just my opinion, if you're we're talking about people who are descendants to my lineage. If you're not going to accept the people who are outside the country, because you say, well, a person who went from America to Liberia, they're no longer American. They are Liberian. They, they're cut off. Well, then when a, when a Haitian or Jamaican moved to America, they're no longer Haitian or Jamaican. They are American then. Yeah, they're American, but they're not black American. No. The they're same still, way those black still... Americans in Liberia are Liberian. Because you saying they're no longer Black American, those Haitians and Jamaicans black, in America are hate. They are not no longer Haitian Jamaican. They do are Black, black people American. identify themselves as American or Black American? They're Black American. So you say when they come here, they're labeled what American. Do they, what neighborhood do us do they assimilate in most of the time? Most of the time, they form their own neighborhoods, their own town. What culture do they assimilate with? Most of the time, they keep their own country, their own culture intact. 
how are we gonna say that? But we say they steal. So that's a lie. No, they do it on social media. They steal, but and they like in their areas, they have their own food, their own you know, shops. You're talking about the ones who live in your neighborhood. I, I've never had any that that's live in my my, neighborhood. Don't make it personal. Talking about in general. I can't. I don't have the. Uh, the it's not the about you. Don't need statistics. You, you Travis. That. You know, if you're gonna claim, you gotta claim them. So you gotta you gotta either claim the foreign black Americans in other countries, or you gotta claim the uh, quote unquote immigrants who came here. Which one? <sighs> See, I'm still gonna talk about. I'm still gonna talk this shit because you can't stop a real black man. I hate the Liberian narrative. Only uh, only three K were formerly enslaved. We were not only group, and they actually didn't have a problem with us. It was the Caribbean ones. Zero came from the U.S. I fucked them fake wish they were black hoes. They constantly trying to destroy the black man and the black community. They didn't have the uh, native community was well, were not were not destroyed by our people. Uh, they can't call themselves anything they want as long as they not here. Tell them, Duke. You can't have it both ways. If you're going to say fuck them, say fuck them. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Anyone claiming away. to be descendant of African Americans are liars. Our people died off because of natural illness or environment. Liberia was a, bi a biracial project to get rid of them. My cousin's hub is from Gambia, and he always implies he doesn't know Gambian history. Son's doc is from uh, Zambia or uh, Zimbabwe. She too told me she didn't know her history until uh, she went to college in Europe. Black Nova Scotians, Travis, uh, a switch hitting a uh, political hoe, not claiming anyone outside of America. You can't do that, or you gotta claim the ones that's here, because <laughs> it's the same thing. If a Haitian tell a if a Haitian tell a Haitian American you ain't Haitian, you'll be like, yes, they are. So if a person who's Black American moves to another country, if they say you know you're not Black American, you that other country, then. Yeah, go with the same thing here. Okay. All right. Black Chicago voters rip mayor on extra 70 million for migrants to recall petition gathers steam. So they're trying to give 70 million to the migrants in Chicago. It's felt by many people in South Shore. So I urge you to support the South Shore CBA ordinance. Thank you. Now, this is the council meeting they had. Shout out to Kifa. Shout out to Kifa. She sent this. And this not is not claiming anyone, not from uh, Antebellum South. <laughs> Okay. See, this is where the politics come into play and the legality of it. If you're gonna accept if you're not gonna accept them outside and you gotta accept the ones that came in, it's the same thing. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Our next speaker is Michael Young Bay. He's one it's seventy million dollars. Seventy million dollars. And not counting the past, past millions of dollars that this city done approved of, or this state and the county, et cetera. Seventy million dollars. Y'all won't even put a million dollars in one neighborhood. A million dollars in one neighborhood. Brandon Mayor Johnson, you say that you for the children, et cetera, you for the youth. You know, you want to have work program. I'm going to be honest. Every time I look at these Chicago videos, I'm seeing more and more red. <laughs> they, they out here wearing red. <laughs> Brown for the youth, et cetera. Well, a million dollars for these work programs. <laughs> For these children. The Crips there. See, I'm not going to address nobody in the room no more. I'm going to just address you whenever this is city council. Because I gave you a hard draft of, of what me and my family has experienced as far as the discrimination against, these, against me and my child and my wife. You know, they come from places like the Safer Foundation. They come from all Chicago. They come from bring Chicago home. You see, they come for these ministers that y'all have. You know, if you go look on Brand Chicago home site, you see all them reverends and things like that. They got all these nice churches in these neighborhoods. Nice mega churches. And our people homes. And I, want, I don't even want to say our people homes, because some people, we got to be honest, they do let their stuff go. They do live up in trash, et cetera. But, and willingly of their own will. But what about the face? Like, what about 79th Street? You see what I'm saying? What about the face? What about 71st Street? What about all these different streets with these abandoned buildings? With these mm -hmm. empty lots. So he's making the complaints about the general uh, desire to bring money to the local citizens to help them mm -hmm. locally. I want to fast forward because this other white guy. He was this saying, white guy was for them getting he the was 70 for them million. getting the money. And then you had, <laughs> had this red hat wearing white guy. You already know he was against it. But I want to fast forward to this dude right here because he made a very good point. 
GIS, the homeless, homeless management information system. So my number would have been 355061. That would have been issued July 15th, 2021. We financed that endeavor, right? The HMIS that's financed and budgeted, right? Because this is what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about finance and budget. However, I'm an individual in the room. One individual, y'all mismanaging this, failing actually. Because once again, July 15th, 2021, it's July, what is it now, what? Anybody, April 17th, I didn't sleep last night worrying about this. I didn't sleep last night imagining, well, how do you talk to these people? To have them understand that, hey, this is difficult to deal with, especially when you are 43 year old, resident of the city of Chicago, versus being somebody who just got here, who being treated just like you should be treated, right? I'm just saying. So yesterday was my son's birthday. If I had housing, we could have spent it pleasantly. I didn't speak to him. I didn't speak to him. His name, Ian Waltold by Sims. I actually have an order of protection. His mom got it. My son is a star pupil and a star athlete in Everston High School. However, his father support him to the utmost, and yet I'm, I'm attacked over this. I'm attacked maybe because of my views and the fact that to point out that our government, our city government, now that I understand, has the, basically turned their back on black Chicagoans. Y'all yeah. are implementing our demise here in the city through financing and budgeting. I sit in the room and actually get the understanding now. And it's disgusting. The hardship that I'm suffering and been suffering, it seems like it's not only unintentional, it seems like it's manufactured. Like I've been pursued for the last four years simply for my views or simply for pointing out the fact that I'm not getting nowhere. We talk about, let's, let's repair it. But you're gonna put 70, more, 70 million into a, this mission. 600 million in Illinois alone. 275 million more. This year counted 150 million. My HMIS number is 355061. How did y'all drop the ball for so many years on one individual? Wow. But y'all coming to budget and finance, y'all coming to budget and finance the demise of black Chicagoans here. That's what y'all budgeting and financing. Y'all whittling us out and y'all doing it in such a gracious fashion. Y'all. Now, I got to that to say his whole point was they're deliberately pushing the black Chicagoans out. And we already been talking about this. One they team. want them to migrate. Migrate back down south. south. They're trying to push them out of Chicago in order for the migrants or the immigrants to move in. Now I want to show this one right next to it. Just to be quick. Um. Chicago. I am P. Ray of the 37th Ward. Chicago Red is our organization. Because we started this session with a prayer, I want to start my comment with the scripture. First Timothy 5 and 8 says, but if any provide not for his own and specifically for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. So I want to talk to y'all today about not going to hell. In the 37th Ward, there was a family, the Jones family. Amari A. Jones was standing in her family building that they've owned for 40 years, doing a TikTok dance with her mother. A bullet came through the window, hit her in the neck. She fell to the ground in front of her mother and bled to death. A month ago on the Chicago Mugshot page, her mother was on that page. Her mother had on her daughter's Rest in Peace t-shirt. She watched it so many times that it was completely faded out. She was completely hot out of her mind and the charge was possession. Now, the first $51 million that this council gave to the migrants came from the opioid settlement fund. I am here on behalf of the Jones family, on behalf of the 37th Ward, on behalf of Black Chicago, on we have the entire city to ask you all to vote no and put that money back in the opioid settlement fund. We They're taking money from the opioid settlement fund and giving it to migrants. And giving it to the migrants. It's even it's even worse. When she talk about the cartel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need that money in my neighborhood. We need that on my block. That woman should not be at Cook County Jail because she's grieving over a random act of violence that caused her to lose her child in front of her face when the city of Chicago has millions upon millions upon millions of dollars to give to people who ain't paid a dime into the tax base. We've been in my building for 52 years. We've got to pay some more taxes. The Jones family has been in their building for 45 years paying taxes every year on time. So I'm asking y'all to use our tax money for our people. We we need it. We got people leaning. We got people rocking. We got overdosing. We got uh, pass out lines. You live on the west side, uh, Mayor Johnson. You know exactly what I'm talking about. We need the money for us. We need opioid treatment on the west side of Chicago. We are the headquarters of the cartel and everybody. Yeah. Right there. She said we are the headquarters of the cartel. Y'all remember that show or Zart? Yeah, it starts in Chicago cartel. Now, when the other ladies start talking, it'll finish this. Uh, what we 
think yeah. is going on when the other uh, black lady come up. Yeah. In here yeah. knows it. They selling more drugs than the law can allow and y'all giving money back to them because they traffic those people up here. Uh, so we paying them. Go she said they're trafficking them up here. So she's saying that y'all y'all trafficking these people into the country and then you're giving them the money. We know the cartel is a big deal over there. She basically said money laundering. Exactly. She's saying some money laundering. That's what the whole on. show Orzark was about was money laundering and they it came from Chicago. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and coming. Absolutely not. We pay too much. It costs too much money to live in this city. Help Wanda Jones. Help every other grieving mother who feels like she has to go get high to get over the loss of her child. This is a woman who lived in that house. She still sleeps in that living room where her daughter passed out and bled to death. So I'm asking y'all to say no. Put these people on the back burner and put the money back in the opioid fund. We need that money. All right, so we saw her. Oh, we got to put this dude right quick. <laughs> I come he here for a different there. perspective. I come here to give you praise. I hope to soften the blow here. He um, came in for a I job. I was sitting here, you know, after being evicted. Um, <laughs> I he said, I, just, I was sitting here after being evicted. The turmoil that I'm going through. Bust I'm here to say loose. thank you. I think you're doing a great job, you know, despite the disparities that's going on within our communities. You know, shucks, I don't care what mayor was here, it wouldn't be done. But more importantly, I'm here too. Um, to let you know that I'm a struggling <laughs> young man. Um, I've, I've always... <laughs> at your tenure, wanted to work for your administration. You know, my goal <laughs> is to get hired. I believe in your, your mission. This nigga, uh, 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 You know, uh, I'm, I'm really struggling. asking for a job, nigga struggling. He said, I'm a struggling young man. <laughs> <laughs> a plant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a struggling young man, so. Oh, God. <laughs> and I got to show the last one, last one, y'all. Oh, she crunk. This last one is her. She on the ass. We've shown her before. She <laughs> wanted to call them lazy. Boo, get him off the stage. <laughs> get him off the stage. That's the camera, oh, bro. You <laughs> All right, last one, last one. So, Christmas is coming early this year. Oh. <laughs> we're going to check that list when it go up on that wall for voting, and we're going to check it twice. Oh, yeah. And we're going to find out who's been naughty or nice <laughs> based on how y'all vote. And we're going to start it off with Maria Hatton. Yeah. Why, why is all this kind of anti-immigrant sentiment coming up? And I want to explain to folks, it's because if we cared as much about black people and had over the decades as we do about everyone else, we wouldn't be here. But the money from a 20... All right. That would be Maria Haddon. Stepping out there. Y'all see you. Don't get sarcastic because we can get jiggy, right? You sit up here for that first 51 million talking about how you feel about black people and how you have to have the same energy for black people and you ain't never stood on this floor talking about money for black people. You get on this floor and talk about black and brown because you're somewhere in the middle with it, right? But I'll tell you this, and I'm telling every other black alderman in here today, you vote for the money for these immigrants today, and we coming for them seats. You can believe that. You're going to stop pimping the black people's plight to get brown people, as y'all call it, money. You're going to give us our press conference, up there on the third floor, keep talking to the mayor's boy with the clink clink from his past. That's why he got to do what the mayor say do. Him and a lot of other ones in here with these shady pass. That's why you got to vote the way that you vote. But all of us ain't got shady passes. Some of us free out here. And we can vote how we want to vote. And we coming for those seats. Now, to align yourself with somebody who's obviously a one-term mayor, if he even makes it that far, you better be worrying about your job. You better be worrying about your longevity. Because we're going to vote and we're going to get you out because you ain't doing right by us. That's what time it is. And for your law person that's next to you, I'm going to need you to check out that federal charge that I got against those public administrators over there for messing with black people's property. It's federal case number 23CV14590. All right? And, it's, and on, 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 that note, on that note, if y'all don't give us our money for the black community, Know this, we're getting ready to file a federal injunction against City Hall for benign neglect to the south side and west side. Yeah. You got that? Boom. Yeah. <laughs> get her, get her on a diss song. Go ahead, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, We decline a narrative that we must accept anyone state, stated on this platform. Boy, bye. <laughs> uh, the importance of a race convo is the main reason to me why we should kick uh, the word black to the curb. There are black cultures within black cultures, subcultures, etc. We do not have the same experience. That's true. 
You need money to buy politicians. What are these discussions about? People who don't uh, people who don't don't have a leader typically do stuff like what we do. Yeah. When you don't have a true leadership, you you're forced to just constantly complain. Starting with a prayer in government is crazy. <laughs> Is all uh, is this all occurring to usher in the next wave of new world order with the new crop of people desperate to be here so easy to adopt into new reset old negroes no longer controllable mm, maybe so uh get your money black man individual forget community Somebody asking for a job <laughs> <laughs> keep this guy was pathetic <laughs> see a plant supports a fucking plant <laughs> these discussions produces nothing damn i like her lol <laughs> Fuck that we, sh- we shit. Fuck that we shit. <laughs> In the name of uh, Jesus, honorable is a <laughs> rejected because you don't believe. <laughs> wow. All right, let me run through these next things. We can go through them pretty quick. All right, watch. Yeah. Stephen A. Smith believes black people relate to Donald Trump because of ex-president's criminal indictment. We already talked about this. Um, if I can play the video. We, we look at polls. Polls yes, are always broken down demographically. And you see this major erosion in the Democratic base for Biden, African-Americans, Hispanic-Americans, yeah. young people. Mm-hmm. And if Donald Trump could hold on to 5, 10, 15 percent of the numbers no that he sound. has now, he yeah. will win the next election. <laughs> Why is that happening? That's my yeah. question. As Sean much as people Hannity. may have been abhorred by Donald Trump's statement weeks ago, talking about how black folks, he's hearing that black folks find him relatable because what he's going through is similar to what black Americans have gone through. He wasn't lying. He was telling the truth. When you see the law, law enforcement, the court system and everything else being exercised against him, it is something that black folks throughout this nation can relate to. With some of our historic, iconic figures, we've Goldstein seen that happen Dershowitz. throughout society. Mm-hmm. So no matter what race, Stephen what a. Is ethnicity a Caribbean you American. may emanate from, we relate to you when you're suffering like that because we know we have. And that you agree with him? I mean, we talked about this already, whether or not black people actually. I don't think so. I don't care to hear his opinion. I don't think most black people are found any sort of connection with Donald Trump because of him being charged with a crime. It's the same thing as saying that black people like Trump more because he did some damn shoes. Like, I don't I don't think so. I think the people who are going to vote for him were already thinking about it. I don't think any of this really changed much of it. Um, Haitian group seeks billions in reparations from France. How's that going, George? <laughs> Well, they're going for France uh, now. I think uh, Dominican Republic, you said it has something to do with Spain, one of those countries? Before? No. Spain, no. Yeah, Spain. Uh, Dominican Republic said they're going after uh, Spain, which I don't know how, because they kind of invited them there to go against them, didn't they? Well, yeah, in order to go against the Haitians, yeah. But, you know, they're seeking reparations, too. Well, the Dominican they, Republic. They invited the Spanish and they invited the Jewish people to come in and um That's why there's there's a lot of uh Sephardic Jews in Latin America. All right. Uh African uh, migrants swarm NYC City Hall for hearing on experiences of black migrants. A lot of the You could skip this ad. But you won't of, let us. <laughs> so a whole bunch of Africans were uh mar- were swarming uh NYC uh City Hall. Because of the stuff they're going through, let me play it. There are unique dialects that are also coming that I've never heard of that I'm learning now um, about. People from Madagascar coming. You have people of uh, Burundi are coming. People from countries that are not common to us. Uh, so language access has been truly, truly a challenge, especially if you don't understand. Polar from Guinea and Polar in Mauritania, Polar in Senegal is very different. So what do you... So thank you because we have to push for language access because I have seen it, people telling me even to stay in the shelter, to wherever in the herd they cannot stay because when they ask them to um, reapply, they're not getting it. And so thank you for continuing the work. I do. What do you think about their America being a one language country? That's what it, that, that's, I mean, what are we, what we as American citizens are supposed to learn every language that's coming over here? Hey, yo, if, if, if you got a, if you're told that you're inviting immigrants to come that's, in. No, we're not inviting them over here. The government is letting them come over here, not the citizens. That's two, two totally different things. No matter if they're here, you have to accommodate them, don't I'm you? I'm not accommodating shit. I mean, you do, we did it with Spanish. I didn't Spanish accommodate the Spanish. You get a phone book. Do they even pass out phone books anymore? No, I don't. No, they, don't. they used to come in the mail. Yeah, so, you used to no. get a phone book and used to have 
just English. Next thing you know, it was Spanish inside of the book. It was Spanish as well. In all thank California for that. <laughs> for the Mexicans, <laughs> dry begging at City Hall is nothing new. Africans are something else. <laughs> it doesn't matter because the, uh, they wasn't invited. Fuck that. I'm here. You speak in my language. Pass. Meanwhile, is Ukraine the new America where the billionaires will live? Play in the war is only a cover. On the podcast, uh, redacted. They were showing the uh, the mansions and cars being purchased. We, we, hold on, we talked about this when when the war for, when the war first started. How there's after the war, there's gonna be a lot of money put back into that country where they're supposed to become big Israel. Well, that's why America is pouring so much money into Ukraine. Well, they're not pouring as much, as much in them now. Yes, they are. Do you see just out of that ninety five billion? How much you think going to Ukraine? Sixty one. 61? $61 billion is going to Ukraine. The rest is going to be divvied up between Israel and um, Taiwan. Taiwan ain't getting but a million. I mean, one billion probably. <laughs> they ain't getting shit. <laughs> Taiwan, look at they get a check. Go ahead. Uh, Condoleezza Rice <laughs> no. knows 12 languages you can learn too. Well, fuck her. <laughs> she can learn what she want to learn. Uh, I ain't learning it. I'm not accommodating them. So the new Israel... The news is claiming uh, Israelites, or no, Israelis, are leaving in droves currently. Yeah, because that shit popping off over there. I repent for calling them Israelites. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. All right. Uh, man dies after setting himself on fire outside courthouse I didn't where even Trump read this. trial was hell. <laughs> I didn't even read this. Oh, you ain't got to read it. We ain't got to read nothing. We're going to watch this. So It's a black woman. The she dude, didn't even try to put the man out. The, she said the dude set himself on fire, and the black woman gave a <laughs> play-by-play coverage of what happened. <laughs> Let me just play. What do you say? We also are seeing the, the shoot, an active shooter. An active shooter is in the park outside the court. We have a man who is lit, he has set fire to himself. A man has emblazoned himself outside of the courthouse just now. Our cameras are turning right now. A man has now lit himself on I fire. I don't see no man lit on fire. In Manhattan, we are waiting a history to be made. A full jury panel is gone. We are watching a man who is fully emblazoned in the front of the courthouse today. Oh, I do see him we right there. Multiple fires breaking He's on the ground, but I don't see no fire on him. We have seen it is. That we are watching He's right here. Oh, he's sitting on a bench on a fire. He's now on the bench. In the front of the courthouse today, we are watching multiple fires breaking out around his body and person. We have seen an arm that has been visible that has been engulfed in total flames. There is chaos that is happening. <laughs> Look, people are wondering. Right <laughs> hey, she gave us stuff. See, I gotta read this. This was fascinating to watch. We don't see real journalism today. <laughs> now, if people are in danger, I'm looking across the court, across the courtyard. There is a man racing to his aid. There is coats coming off to try to put out the fire. We have members of. Look at the man behind. Him. He's like, Lord, Lord. Hold on. Hearing details. NYP. New York is crazy because they see a man set itself on fire. And they're not really. Well, they they but they see all crazy types of shit all day, every day throughout their life. So what's that? What's that term called? Called the the crowd effect. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Where when there's a big crowd and somebody does something to themselves or doing something to somebody else, when there's a large crowd, people are less likely to interrupt because there's a bigger crowd. People are more likely to follow the first person who do it or don't. So everybody just kind of waits for somebody to do it, and nobody ever does nothing. That's what happened with. You see these stories like George Floyd, where everybody's standing around watching somebody get choked or something, and nobody jumps in because it's a crowd. Well, if there was no crowd, one person standing there by themselves, they're more likely to jump in and stop it. Can I read this one? Go ahead. On a federal level, the U.S. doesn't have an official language, but I think American English should be the official language. Well, yeah, that's the that, that was, that's what was going on in Illinois a few years ago. There was a um, there was a city that was trying to make English their official language because of, apparently America does not have an official language. Um, so they were trying to do it because there was a lot of Mexicans moving in <laughs> and they were making everything Spanish. So, yeah, don't make no he sense. Rushing to the scene. They are trying to come out. Officers are on the scene. A fire extinguisher is right now present being put on this man to try to put out. People are climbing over barricades to try to separate the public to put out the flame on the fire. I smell an actual fire extinguisher having been displayed. I see a person whose body appears to be on the ground being surrounded by officers. I all right, so y'all get the point. What, you, what was the damn purpose of him setting stuff on fire? Was it a show protest for Donald Trump or was I, it about was it, Israel? That's what Regina says. She says this story was crazy in process of Trump getting elected or what was the purpose? I'm guessing it was in process of 
him getting elected, he set himself on fire. But that was his dumb ass. It's a man who set himself on fire Friday outside a courthouse where former President Donald Trump hush money trial is taking place has died. New York City police in uh, early Saturday. The man whom police identified as Maxwell Azarlo, uh, St. Augustine, Florida, was in the designated protest area outside. No time of death was given by police. He was declared deceased by staff at the hospital. Yada, yada, yada. Police say he entered the park from across the street to the courthouse. Uh, um, yeah, I don't think they, so far, they haven't got a, a reason. The 73-year-old man from Upper West Side, they watched it happen. Yes, yeah, so I don't know if it was the protest him getting voted in, or is it protesting uh, them, quote-unquote, persecuting Trump, or was it just him protesting a, a an event that he know would have a lot of media and it has something to do with something else? I don't know. Well, the, what did they say in the article? Uh, He was singing about... uh. Oh, he was thinking about a revolutionary in a video. Do can you suggest a book that addressed your points about black women on plantations in cahoots with the white man? Where uh were they considered concubines? No, they weren't concubines. Well, I'm, I'll send it um I'll send it to you uh to you uh after the show. Oh, you they gonna be waiting. I'll send it to you after the show. Um <clears throat> let me show this quick little story. I'm so proud of her. Far right trolls post. What are you doing? What the hell are you doing? I'm minding my damn business like you should be. I can do two things at once. I'm so proud of her. Far right trolls post video bragging about the little baby saying a racial slur. Uh, yeah, yeah, post that link, dude. <laughs> they better not be fair skinned. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, so this woman right here, they, these are right wing uh, people. She posted her child. Lord have mercy. She posted her child saying the N-word. <laughs> She's right here. Said, my daughter literally said the N-word. I'm so proud of her. And then somebody started going in on the baby. <laughs> and I'm going to show this picture. <laughs> my husband's texting me. Well, where's the picture? Oh, they... <laughs> somebody said, get this light host off my screen. So they going in on the white baby. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I can't show the video because they deleted their pages immediately after they put the video up. Uh, they deleted their pages, but in the video, the baby, I guess you can say it said the N-word, but not really. But the point of the matter is, why are you even putting your kid on the internet to even get this type of backlash? Uh, then I want to show this right here. And he said that he wanted my husband texting me, and he said that he wanted me to tell you that we will have our daughter ready for you as a virgin. <laughs> This type of jokes white people make. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Uh, okay. The mama's karma will be her will be her baby gonna get the N-word once she starts going to school and not that. <laughs> white, white girl magic. <laughs> oh, that's All right, let me uh Remember with that uh, technology we talked about a few weeks ago, the human mm. AI, the little mm. pen thing? Well, it was finally released. I went and watched his video, his review on it. And he said it was trash. <laughs> he said the worst piece of technology he's ever reviewed. <laughs> he <laughs> said it's trash because... Hold, well, it, hold on. YouTube no. star Marquez Brownlee, scaling uh, human AI pen review leads to argument over ethnics and influence. Go ahead. No, he was just pretty much saying it's trash because, one... He said it's, it's heavy. Mm -hmm. They made it with, uh, I think, aluminum. Mm -hmm. And he was saying how uh, the projection on it is not good. You, you can't see it very well. The things, you have to maneuver your hand. He was saying how it don't have no apps. Like, it's it's literally a device that's for itself. Mm -hmm. So, in, in the phone, he just said it wasn't good. <laughs> well, they mad with him for saying that. Saying he oh, yeah, he said it's it's $700, yeah. and then it's $24 per month for a subscription. That's crazy. You're already paying $700, and on top of that, I got to pay a $24 per month subscription. They should be glad that he did do this review to stop people from really being pissed off after they buy it. Look at this. No, that's not that. Where's that? Thank you so much for that. Never mind. In that, the dude pointed out that right after he did that uh, review, they said, well, he just bankrupted the country. He just bankrupted wow. the whole company in one video. <laughs> he has a big uh, following. Very big following. Meg Thee Stallion. And they pissed off with him because um, they said that 
you shouldn't go at a company like that when you know it's just starting off. Did you get rid of Meg the Stallion? No. Oh. They, they're just starting off. You don't really want to go and destroy a company that early. You want to let them develop it properly. So Wait a minute. You're trying to hold it to him. Is All that right. kid black? I don't know. Now, I want to show this too. 150 black men unite for a black man flash mob to celebrate black excellence and culture in Oakland, California. The kids want black their head up there. I'll be seeing, um, I'll be seeing these videos <laughs> every year around the same part of the year. And it always sends people into an uproar <laughs> about them doing this. I don't get, I don't get it. I'm going to play the video. I just love to see black men smiling. This one right here may not have as many negative uh, responses because every time I've seen this every other year, oh my God. <laughs> oh, Regina, honorable facts. <laughs> <laughs> see, I told you. At honorable, shit, fuck them hoes. <laughs> so I'll be seeing comments saying, what are they really doing? Are they just dressing up and going home? What's the purpose of this? What does it serve? Are they just dressed up and going home? Yeah, are they, are they building something from this? And it's like they're networking. Oh, like, they're always going at the brother trying to do something for the youth. With the youth man. Megan the Stallion. All right, Megan the Stallion was honored at Planned Parenthood of Greater New York Spring. Where is Uncle Margaret Sanger play the video. would be proud of her? entire Planned Parenthood organization for this incredible award. <laughs> Shout out to y'all. Make some noise. We need to create communities where women can receive sexual and reproductive health care with the love, respect, and compassion that they deserve. I promise to continue to Crash. do my part and use my platform to break down barriers and empower women all around the world. <laughs> Trash. Oh, exactly, Kifa. Trash. When I started to give awards... Agreed. When did Planned Parenthood... <laughs> when did Planned Parenthood start to pass a out? A gala. A gala. A gala. Oh, oh, when did Planned Parenthood start giving awards out? It was a whole... It was some white women that got awards, too. Oh, I know they did. It's for their activism. Lord have mercy. <laughs> I ain't gonna do this one. Gonna... You get to get an award for... I just can't believe it. Our senior admin for Dalton Thornton Township charged with bankruptcy fraud. So we back on the city girl mayor, uh, Tiffany Henyard. Tiffany Henyard. What? <laughs> uh, the senior admin for Dalton uh, uh, Thornton Township charged with a bankruptcy fraud. So they're coming after the feds involved. Feds did a search. Oh, sorry. Feds did a sweep. <laughs> they're trying to shake her down. They're trying to go for people. Get her about they're wow. trying to go for the people around. Keep us in this too. Her music is activism. Oh, okay. I want to show this part right here. Hold on. First class. So were the accommodations. Portland, Austin. There's one thing that I want to focus on trips to Portland, Austin, Atlanta, and New York City. Many of the flights were first class. So were the accommodations. In Atlanta, they stayed at the Four Seasons, costing taxpayers more than $9,000. Okay, so that's the clip I'm dealing with. <clears throat> so Tiffany Henyard, apparently, her and people on her staff was taking trips to other states to get business opportunities for the city. They were trying to bring people back to the city for business opportunities. Now, the w problem is, apparently, according to this woman, they had an opportunity and she turned it down. Let me play it. Uh, I don't, okay. 
the adult. Okay. Well, what was the outcome when that man came in the door? So, one business owner, is it okay to say the name? It, a business owner, is it okay to say the name? Okay, so Rucker Holden was bringing a cigar lounge to Dalton. Okay, so just so happened, Kiana works for him and his other businesses. But because he, she don't like Kiana, Trustee Belcher, she's not going to give Rucker what he want. In fact, she told him, if you don't get your bitch in order, I'm not giving you what you want. Oh, she a pimp. A madam. Yeah, so get this. He came Sound into like the office one day. This is how I found all this out. He came into the office one day. They said DeAndre Rucker. I said, I'm like, I know DeAndre. Hold on. What's up? He told me, he said, I'm trying to get my business together, blah, blah, blah. I said, yeah, I just heard your building was not compliant. That's what I was told. He said, that's not true. He had it investigated. He had it, you know, inspected. Everybody has been inspected five, six times. Um, he was in compliance. She just didn't like him. Now, get this. <laughs> um, that same day, there's an ordinance to have his cigar lounge open. Now, let me tell you something about, I know about, if you've never been to Rucker Cigar Lounge, it's sexy, grown and sexy. Riff Raff can't even afford the cigars, yet alone anything else in there, so you're not gonna get them there. It's sexy, real nice for grown-ups. It's just nice, good music, all that. So, I'm like, this would be a plus for Dalton. Well, he Pretty come hard. with one ordinance. <laughs> Kiana come with another ordinance. I went and pulled another ordinance. <laughs> it's three ordinance. These are false ordinance. Damn, Somebody got some falsified bunk. fraudulent documents, right? The clerk's office only had one. But it came three different ordinances. So I'm like, okay, this look a little sus. All right. <laughs> Let me look into it over the weekend. I had a meeting set up with them the next week. I got called in by the administrator, said it's a conflict of interest. I have to remove myself because I know him. And then what? So because she knew him, they didn't allow her to go into the investigation to why there was three different ordinances to allow him to have this one business. So clearly she got some stuff going on behind the scenes. True. Where she's controlling how things go. What would your opinion on this? Um, I do. I think in a video it mentioned how expensive. No, she just said that it's, it's more expensive than another place. He said it was good for the city. I just didn't hear. I just heard the cigar part. I didn't hear that it was an actual. She said club. It was a lounge. Yeah. So I don't have a problem with it. Before I, before I heard that part, I was like, well, is it a good idea to have a, a cigar uh, place for in the in the town? Is it is it going to bring any revenue for the town? Is it is it necessary? It's not. It's, what's that? What's that? Uh, Claw Anderson. What do he have? A fish store. Yeah, a fish. A fish store in the he hood. That's shop. not that. That shut down. That's not that. So she on the fire still. They also said they want. Uh, they calling for Lori Lightfoot to investigate. To investigate her. her. I, just, I wonder if her and Lori are pretty probably cool. <laughs> That's probably one of uh, one of her mm-hmm. homes from back no, in the day. No, Tiffany Henyard don't agree with that lifestyle. But you don't know what that woman believe in. All right, uh, hey there, my name is Ben Bradley. I'm an investigative reporter at WGN TV. Now this is dude that's going after her. going after her. This white guy right here. He's the one that's truly going after her. Yes. <laughs> He's the one that really want to get up out of here. I want to show it's a certain part of this I want to show. Hold on. I do anything as relates to with credit cards. The lounge seems like a good idea so adults can have their own uh, place and grow up. <laughs> as you heard me speak today in my board meeting about they pay for beetle juice. <laughs> I do not handle that. Some of those charges are for you though. No, sir. You didn't go to Las Vegas? Mm. Don't say it on camera. What, what is that? No comment. You don't know if you were that, in Las that's Vegas? That's how you're supposed to do it. Of course I do. Were you? It's not paid by them. Did you fly first class to Las Vegas? Any other questions? Let's stop. <laughs> I ain't got don't self no more. yourself hey, on come TV. On, man. <laughs> she just... Don't do it. <clears throat> Dude, don't listen to Cody Raheem Rhodes. <laughs> Who is that? I think that he did a WWE fighter. Uh, 
Kansas prosecutor who framed innocent man surrenders law law license will soon be disbarred. So this woman right here, she falsely accused multiple black men. Terry uh, Moorhead, who retired as a federal prosecutor last August, has agreed to turn over her law license as part of an agreement with Kansas City Disciplinary Board as uh, the county prosecutor in the 1990s. Moorhead helped KCKPD Detective Roger uh, Golovsky frame an innocent man, black man, who spent 23 years in prison. Same thing happened with Ahmaud Arbery, right? When they thought that woman was starting to help them two former police officers. The what now? Remember the white oh, woman yeah, she was involved with the case? So she she already retired now. What's she going to do? You disbarred her at the end? What's she care? So yeah. another 23 years lost. More white girl magic. Yep. More, more, more. Get her out of here. No prison time. Exactly. Bureau of Prisons to close California women's prisons where inmates have been subjected to sex abuse. I always said, why are there any men that work in a female prison? And why are there any women that work <laughs> in a male prison? It's never going to work. You hear me? Yeah. You hear me? How about what? Bureau of Prisons in, uh, to close California women's prisons where inmates have been subjected to sex abuse. I said, I always said, why do they have women at a male prison? That's CO. And why do they have men? They should just be female. Uh, well, you can't really do that. Yeah. I guess they have males there to, to restrain them because yeah. they feel like females can't do it. Yeah. So... Look, mommy, it's a free pink toe for George. George, I'm ready on her. Speaking of pink toes. I mean it. <laughs> no, leave it alone. You gonna say it? No. <laughs> no, we should. I should use it because they've been using pink toes as, a, an, as an attack. When it ain't what we thought it was. No, it's two different. You can, it, 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 it can go with either way, one. The old school way was what? <sighs> a pink toe back in the day would be Kiefer. No, I didn't say no name. <laughs> back in the day, a, a pink, pink toe would be considered a... It's an African American light skinned woman. Woman. It changed into a white woman, but a pink toe is not originally white women. Anyway, so the prison they're trying to shut them down. I already know a lot of that stuff be going on in prison. Although a lot of those, what's the name of that show? Uh, Orange is the New Black. There's another one, a British one, where they make it seem like the women in jail be really, really the one who be making moves on these security guards, having them jammed up. The same way they be happening in these male prisons when the police are, the, the female COs end up pregnant, bringing drugs in. Yeah, they do. They bring the drugs in. So it goes all over the place. A right, temporary protective order filed against resident after making public comments about Fulton County Sheriff. Let me play this one. Approximately 624 on yesterday evening, Mr. Fortner was attacked by Edward Cherry. He was stabbed multiple times. It is certainly under investigation, but he, unfortunately, Mr. Fortner succumbed, succumbed to his injuries. So this is a sheriff who's been called out by this woman here for being uh, neglectful to the local county jail. Let me play it. Spoke out about the incidents and the things that are happening right now in this jail. Learn something new every day. Um, so I received a phone call last night um, pertaining to an inmate that had, at their words, gutted. Um, okay. Learn something new every day. I usually ignore y'all toe comments. <laughs> Is this from the Blue Vein Society? <laughs> no. <laughs> and received some information and some um, pictures of some things that was going on. Also received the... Um, information about the cleanup um, from the inmates and immediately contacted um, those um, that's, that, that's fighting. Now, when she made this comment, uh, I remember I watched this dude on YouTube. He's a former, he used to be in prison. He got out. He served 10 years. His name is Bill. And he was telling stories about how the crazy stuff that goes on in prison. And he said there was one time where there was a stabbing that happened in his block. So when they returned back to the block after the stabbing, there was blood everywhere. And that the the COs got the prisoners to clean it up. And I always thought that maybe that's normal, I don't know. But she's saying it's not supposed to happen. That's a you're supposed to get actual forensic people to come, come in. out to the scene and Yeah, so they have prisoners cleaning up the blood from these stabbings and murders in prison. Mm. So and I know they, when a prisoner has some type of disease or something, they take their medicine, they sometimes separate them, but not all the time. So there might be some instance where somebody's blood is 
completely out, and it might be somebody who has some type of disease, and you got prisoners who don't have on the proper attire to clean this stuff. It's, it's crazy. Well, I'm guessing if they do it, they're making sure they have the proper attire they don't. to do it. He's telling you all they give you is a mop in the bucket. Mm. And you put on the little, what's them called the thing, on your shoes. A hazard? Do they give you a hazard they suit? They don't have a suit. You put a little things around your shoes and make sure you don't, you don't cover it. Oh. That's lightly compared to what really goes on in prison. How do y'all find the time to consume all this YouTube? Was this in your recommendations? Most of this is years. Of, some of this was sent. Well, some of this was sent by Kifa, but most of this that I know you get it from Twitter. This stuff you get from uh, over the years is watching YouTube. Uh, keep in mind, I don't watch no, no television. <laughs> I don't watch no television. Right? Just an observation. I'm starting to look at a prison as a form of ritual for Masons and Boule. Well, we know it's a damn sure uh, a workforce for them, so maybe so. Judge awards $23.5 million to undercover St. Louis officer beaten by colleagues during protests. His white colleagues beat the shit out of him. So Wait, he, he was, pink toe, I've been called a yellow bone. <laughs> no, you're a pink toe. You're a pink toe too, Kiefer. Sorry to tell you the news. But So this police officer was at one of the protests, and his white colleagues beat his ass. He's a cop. He was he was dressed undercover though. They didn't know who he was. That's the that made it even worse. <laughs> they just saw him. Like, oh, he knew who they was. He's like, I know who you are. I know who you are. He did this to get a bag. He did. He? I ain't fighting back. Beat the shit out of me. <laughs> well, he got twenty three million, so he ain't never gotta be a cop ever again. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. They. Yeah. They put hands on him. Well, you'll just accept everything from Kifa. Lol. Do you honestly? Do you honestly think they would care enough to have uh, them the Give them the proper tools to clean. Uh, they saving money having uh, them do it. That's true. That's Go true. home, Roger. Oh, yeah. Oh, Looks like an older Roger. slim thug. <laughs> <laughs> older slim thug. <laughs> now, here's a sad story that happened. The woman, you can explain the story. We Get your read. money, black man. <laughs> we ain't got to read through this one. You can explain this one. Hold on. All right, this story here. Homeowner, 81, who fatally shot innocent Uber driver, thought she was tied to scamming, threatening him for 12 years. What do you think about this story? So, this octogenarian man thought he was being scammed. Uh, somebody called him up and told... Somebody called him. They said that they had a family member that was incarcerated. They were asking him for... Twelve thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Somehow he got through to the Uber app and sent uh, Lolita there to go pick up the package. When she got there, he was already on high alert. He had his revol- revolver out. Yeah. Um. She was like, "Where's the package?" You know, she, she was innocent in this. Mm-hmm. He proceeded to follow her. Follow her. Right he shot her in the the leg. The shoulder, and I can't remember the other place where he shot her. Mm-hmm. But he ended up killing her when she went to the hospital during her surgery. She died. Mm-hmm. So, and they and then when they traced the phone call, it went to Canada. So they believe it's a it was from a burner phone. Yeah, and they are going to try him as murder because they said she posed no threat to him, and he should have just contacted the police instead of taking matters into his own hand. And I'm thinking, well, why haven't y'all been doing this this whole time when people are just shooting people? What about the woman who shot the dude through the door when he went to the wrong house? That was a kid. Yeah. And y'all just said, he well. Was what? He was an African kid, but. Yeah, but it's like, damn. Now, I, I'm glad that he's being charged with something. Like I'm glad that he's being charged with murder. But whoever called him and did that scan. Yeah. They need to find that and charge that person with murder as well. Even his mugshot, he's smiling. So he oh, he's a look, devil he for was, sure. He's just a damn devil. That's he's a devil is. for sure. Uh, the go home Roger sounds like a pink toe. <laughs> well, sister, sister, they are pink toes. They are pink toes. They <laughs> Rest in peace, Miss uh, Lady Uber Driver. The man was out for blood. They usually know the families be on some bullshit if he's getting calls for money. Yeah, mm-hmm. this story is so sad and it's insane. I've, I've been uh, cautioning my daughter to be careful and don't argue with folks or entertain confusion. Who is currently delivering food since she lost her job. 
they don't want Floyd. Uh, they don't want Floyd protest again. Where was her drop off point? That's a good point to ask. But I think they were just sending her just on on a on a uh, dummy um, run. It was never meant for her to pick up anything. It was just maybe a troll, I guess. Yeah, it um, was it. It was somebody that was trying to scam. It was it wasn't funny at all because some people nowadays you have to be on high alert. I'm mm-hmm. not excusing saying what this man is doing, but there are people out here who are seriously on high alert because there's so much scamming and stealing going on that people are ready to pop you. Surely. All right. Um, was this, off with a center that hit him more. We don't need that one. I'm not gonna use that one. My plane ride. All right. So oh. this next story, and I hate to say this, thank God, she's Nigerian. <laughs> She was running a scam on his ass. She was trying to get a check. There's another story with Kiefer. Former MLB pitcher Trevor Bauer accuser has been charged with felony fraud and fake abortion schemes. Okay. So she meets this dude, Trevor Bauer, who's an MLB player. Mm. She tells him how attractive she is to him, yada, yada, yada. Uh, Dirty looking white man. Yeah. So she playing him the whole time. That seems to be the type. So shout she, out to Papa. Uh, uh, shout out to Shelly. That the scammer is a crackhead family member. Probably the old man's son or daughter. Might be. I thought about using that Uber service. Can they pick up from the PO, uh, PO post office? Yeah, they pick up from anywhere. I anywhere. did not know that Uber can pick up packages. It's the same thing as uh, the other one. I thought Uber. When I th- when I think of Uber Eats, I thought Uber Eats was to pick up from restaurants, the grocery store. I didn't know that they pick up packages. Any, they pick up anything. If you tell them to go get it, they'll get it. <laughs> so I didn't know that. So in this story, they started communicating back and forth. Her, the, first, the first woman was a white woman. The white woman accused him in the text messages that she got with her friend where she's saying, yeah, I got one. I'm going I'm to get them. I'm going to make sure I get them good. She basically was making a point. I'm about to get my money. I'm going to get some money out of this dude. Then he get away from that woman somehow. He I don't know how the other one not in jail. She was talking about something crazy, um, accusing him of something crazy. So then he get this African girl, African woman. She comes along. They're talking. They meet up. They hang out. They lay around, lay down with each other. And after the fact, she starts to spam him with messages asking for, to just be next to him. How oh she just want to be next to him and uh, his uh, his manly scent. How she's so attracted to him. So then <laughs> she start. Asking him for his semen. Dog. They smell like dog. That's yeah. his manly scent. Yeah, he says she says she just wants his semen. And he that's when he got fed according to him, that's when he kinda cut her off. Because she wanted a baby for a check. Yeah, but then after he didn't give her that, then she came out and accused him of abuse. Said he sexually assaulted her. So she, then she started then she lied. I'm thinking she said she even lied and said she was pregnant and asked for abortion money. So that's only part of the stuff that she accused him of. I ain't gonna lie, I'm kinda happy that I found out she was uh <laughs> Nigerian. Nigerian. Whenever I hear about uh, scamming stories, I automatically start thinking about Nigerians. <laughs> I told my daughter the same to be on high alert, especially if her gut uh, feels off. Just chalk it up to the capital uh, losses. Did you guys see the story of a black woman using her black male high school student to traffic? Yeah, I saw that. The lady is just as mentally deranged as the other one. Yeah. This the type of game is why we just lost a 19 year old and a 33 year old, 33 man with body parts being found everywhere, shaking my head. Oh, pause. I, I be seeing those stories honorable, but I don't like talking about them because it, it forces another conversation. As much as we can call that man a devil, a wicked demon, and the you know all the stuff that he is, we have to say, at at 19, why are you now? He might have lied about his age. I don't know. But at 19, why are you going to meet up with a 33 year old? You talking about that the black girl that met up with a white dude? Yeah. So I don't talk about those stories because it leads to a conversation that, you know, you don't really want to have around that. You just want to say rest in peace. Hopefully they get justice. Burn, put them in the bottom of the prison. Well, you have some people who are not so nice about that. Not sure why he's out here sleeping around with all these women. Whoa, what do you mean you don't know right. why? <laughs> I saw the story. That's so sad. He out here sleeping with all these women because that's what he want to do. They talking about the white man? Yeah, he's a millionaire baseball player. Well, now he's playing in Mexico. Was the other woman black? No, she was white. Okay, so he don't have a preference. No, he just, you know, he was dealing with what he wanted to deal with. It's just that the white one is the one who got him. I want to say the white one's the one who really hurt him at first, but then the black one came along and he was out of the league. He was just, it's over. Now he, he knew playing, that he was in danger. Now he's playing in Mexico. And I don't know if the MLB is ever going to let him back in because at this point it's over. 
So he got some Mexicans now. <laughs> Maybe so. Uh, he said he said he claimed in a countersuit that she tried. She told him she was pregnant and demanded over one million to terminate the pregnancy. Oh, that I we heard that before. That's running game. That's running game. I ain't pregnant, but I'm gonna lie and say I am. So they give you me mean, money. We've seen it happen with it'll be one woman, and she'll have four or five dudes. She'll tell every last one of the dudes she's pregnant, and she give her the money for the abortion. They all give her the money, and she got all this. Now she just got some money. And then she, she keep spend. it. She know who the daddy is. Oh yeah, she'll keep it if she is pregnant. Is a nineteen is nineteen years old too young? We are always being compared to how white uh, whites marry young. Is that the process? Start early. Well, historically, yes, you start early. Fifteen. More than likely, your grandmother was fifteen, sixteen, 13. seventeen, and your grandfather was eighteen, nineteen. Now, regardless of how we feel about it today. That's usually how it started. Your grandfather is probably at least six, seven years older than your grandmother. He's uh, he's stupid. Go through an agency. Make sure your daughter <laughs> has mace and a pew pew. Oh yeah, that that oh yeah. Uh, Rosie, what you packing? Rosie did say she got that thing on. Her. I forgot. Rosie. They did say they had pop your ass. I forgot. But yeah, uh, I, don't, I don't like talking about those type of stories because you know it's just real, real gory type stuff. You know, but it's sad. It was one that happened a couple uh, last year. With the model girl who she uh, uh died with the white dude, the white dude just walked away. And they, they just let him go. They said she died of an overdose. He met up with some white dude off. Uh, That's the one from Florida. Uh Was she the one from mm-mm. Florida? No, she was one from like Michigan or something. Oh. And uh, and there was obviously the one in uh California with the model who was found in the in the in the uh, hotel. But allegedly she met up with somebody. So it's still sad stories that happen, but you know. <laughs> All right, last story. We're going to just go make this right here the last story. You getting on? You you staying on or you getting off? <laughs> we're going to do this last story. I thought you were going to. Oh, okay. What? Oh, this is the last one? Yeah, I'm gonna, we're, we're going to stop right here. We've been going for a while, I think. It's only 447. It's only not 4, 5 o'clock yet. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> All right. Uh, can we have the conversation about how the music in black culture is over serialized? Uh, okay. Black women. Over serialized yeah, right, right, right. black women. Uh, Connecticut. Yeah, that Connecticut. was in Connecticut. Let her in her apartment. No questions asked. Yep. Uh, should we set better examples? Yes. Yeah. Um, I'll say probably mainstream black music has been uh, affecting black culture in general in a negative way, especially sexually since I would say the early to mid 80s. I can go all the way back to the 70s when the coke, the coke era. The Coke era was pretty bad in the seventies, if you're gonna be honest. You had a black exploitation era, the entertainment era. I mean Agreed, uh, Keith. What on. they typically put in front of the camera most likely isn't gonna benefit black people for the greater good, most of the times at least. No, uh we conversate about music. Y'all did that with jazz. Stop it. <laughs> Sexualized new phone. Oh, okay, okay. Over sexualized black women. Oh, it's definitely happened. It's probably grown even more since the 90s that's probably obviously uncle luke and all them is where it really blew up and now that no well normal. like hold on now uh in the 2000s they stopped doing uh black uh video girls well that happened they because moved to go ahead it kind of happened with the nelly situation when he did the tip drill oh taking the credit card and swiping it down the crack of their ass yeah they pissed off a lot of women a lot of women advocacy group black women advocacy groups and they said you know stop doing this so a lot of the record labels saw that backlash that he received and said okay leave black women out of it. let's go get these ambiguous women from black other countries team. and bring them in because they don't want to be in these videos so then around the 2003 4 5 you started seeing the spanish colombian all those other women in the and videos. then later on black women started you know saying Oh yeah! Oh, they're they don't not want to using videos. the videos. Yeah, they wanted a balance. We don't want to be the we wanted to be the love interest in the video, not the sexual one. Yeah. Have them be the hoes. It wasn't always the artist <laughs> made the decision. That's the label. Yeah, so it is what it is. They said they don't want to deal with that. So I'm gonna play this video. Let me tell you. Tell me what y'all response. How can be. you over sexualize women while also claiming they are the least desirable, according to Kevin? Well, he never said they were least desirable. Who the least desirable? Kevin was saying how. In a white to white people, what they like, the quote unquote dominant society, this is the standard. He's not saying what he or what everybody else believe. He was saying that if you're a woman who, as the woman he was talking to was saying, he actually, every time he asked a woman a question, he would say, Does it matter the man you want if he's black? And if they said no, okay, well, then you got to qualify for this global look, not just black look. 
Okay, this is what the globe finds attractive. This is what the average man finds attractive. Do you meet those standards, though? So. Anyway, this video right here, if you got on a plane and saw this happening, what would be your reaction? My plane ride from Nashville to Houston. Majority of us were strangers. Would you get off the plane? I saw a lot of people saying that they started on the plane. They were <laughs> this like soul plane. They would find their way off. I don't mind it. Plane, I love us for real. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> no. I love my people. No, 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 no. Who cares what the global standards is? Exactly, but. If you're a woman, he was talking to a black woman. If you're a woman who said that you don't want, you don't have a standard or the belief that the man you want to be with has to be black, you want it to be any man, then we got to go with the hella ratchet. We got to go with what the rest of the world <laughs> thinks. Uh, some people need to live a little. <laughs> uh, he said that there is scientific data that proves black women are the least desired of all women on the earth. You talking about those poses they do? So, they nah, I'm good. He really said nah. So you got that's like so. I'm sorry, no. I you know what? No, I'm not getting off the plane. Look, I'm getting off. I'm chilling. I, all you gotta do is mind your business. You know. No, I'm not getting on it. Now, if you talk too much, somebody might throw an elbow, and now the whole plane looking at you like you corny. No, I'm getting you off. know, sit in the corner by the window. I don't want to be on a. I don't want to be on a plane with that. How annoying, he Lord. Oh. <laughs> well, Travis got to say this because he get mad at public uh, people. He he hate black people blasting music. Public. Black males. <laughs> Have a problem with limiting their music to them. They don't want to wear hair for headphones, earbuds. They want to either have their phone playing or a fucking radio. I don't understand. Not everybody want to hear what you're listening to. It's just very disrespectful. You don't have no, uh, you don't care about other people being around you. I don't like that shit. <laughs> Said. We do the most and the least at the same time. <laughs> How y'all gonna get off? <laughs> you gonna lock yourself in a restroom? No, I, I'm going where the, I, I'm I going where the a, luggage is underneath a plane. I could say I'm having a panic attack. I could, you know, I could do a lot of stuff get off that plane. No. I can make around, land that plane. Being around, uh, an, being around another, another people. Period. No, what black males are you talking about, Travis? <laughs> uh, I wouldn't. It's not a it's, I can't say the Pookies and Ray Rays because I've, I've seen I from what I've seen I've never I don't see anybody getting on a public transportation besides uh, a black man that will blast his shit and don't give a damn whether it affects you or not. I agree with Honorable. Lou Honorable said you need your own transportation for that complaint. I agree. No, it's you public. don't. It's a public. No, 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 no. Fuck that. It's rules on the bus. It says keep your keep noise level to yourself. It plainly says you are supposed to it's wear a headphones. Public, a plane is public too. I don't give a damn. Plane, uh, sidewalk is all That's public. disrespectful. Not everybody want to hear that fucking shit. Oh, y'all are all the, the pookies, pookies and Ray Rays. I ain't no fucking pookie and Ray Ray. Shaniqua. We all pookies and Ray Rays. Charlie. I ain't no fucking pookie and Ray Ray. What, what they see when the, how they say it when the cops see it? What they see? They don't see no fucking pookie and Ray Ray. Yeah. Me. All right. All right. You should be mindful of others. Thank you, Kifa. They don't have no manners nowadays. Just rude as hell. This ain't the this ain't the eighties and nineties of early hip hop walking around with your boom box where everybody can hear that shit. Some of that shit I don't want to hear. I don't know, man. I think I'm I'm okay with people playing their music, man. It's energy, it's a vibe. It Especially, ain't a vibe. Not everybody wanna listen to that shit you listening to. But here's the thing. If you play the music in the right moment, it can lead to a, it can. a funny moment around what funny other moment? black people. It might be a song you like. Somebody walk on what, the bus and moment? playing some. If somebody walk on the bus and playing some 2001 Ja Rule, you might be like, "Oh snap!" Get I ain't a heard car, that in a nigga. <laughs> Get a car, nigga. You might be like, "Oh, I ain't heard this in a while." Oh snap! You walking down the street and somebody walk by you with a nice tune. Everybody stop and do a little dance together. It's community. If it's someone, friendly. If someone complains about my music, I'm going to join the team Spectrum really quick. These claim, uh, this uh, calms my anxiety. <laughs> well, then put your fucking headphones on. I don't want to hear that shit. See, I don't, I don't agree. I think, it, I think you need people to be more. You no, know, you need people to just be to themselves. No, and mind I don't their agree fucking with that. business. We need to get rid of need. the individuality in the black community. That's the problem. 
We need what? Get rid of the individuality in the black community. There's no individuality in the black community. You just know everybody should just save themselves? Uh, I kind of like when folk play music. Uh, hey, well, <laughs> I agree. I, I don't like everything that other folk like. So you can keep that shit to yourself. Now, Headphones are the key. Now, I will say, yes. obviously, there's some music I don't want to hear. You know what I do when I don't want to hear it? I put my headphones. I on. have my headphones on. So if I have my headphones at the <laughs> at the highest volume it can go to, and this nugga is still he has his his uh his phone blasted or his 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 boombox or whatever it is, at this point, what am I supposed to do besides take what? off your headphones and enjoy, man? <laughs> if I say you can't even be nice, I remember one. <laughs> it didn't go there, but I remember one time it was an older. I didn't realize he was like like probably like 15 years older than me and I was on the phone. Mm-hmm. And it was it was an important phone call. And I said, "Sir, can you please turn that down?" And he looked at me, he looked at me like, like "What? This nigga crazy." He said, "Okay." And then uh I was kind of like then I felt I was like, "I'm sorry, sir. I didn't, you know, I was just on the phone having an important." See, it's kind of different. He was respectful. He turned it down. Now if the shit would have went left. Yeah, oh, but if I would put <laughs> pause on you. Shit. Uh I got to think about the energy other people are giving out with their music, exactly. the That's frequency. Thank you. I recently started uh, walking uh, in for exercise in the park, and I saw a few people hating on K Dot like that. I played the loudest it goes. <laughs> so you just you just real disrespectful. <laughs> That's the problem. Uh, important call in public is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah. Why are you taking the public uh, call in public? It's not a bar or a club. Thank you, Regina. Uh, thank you, Kifa. It's not. It, why is it so hard for people to just have respect for other people around them? I don't know, man. I, th- I think sometimes I'm it's... very. I'm a very respectful person. I'm not gonna turn my radio up. I'm not gonna be talking loud. That's just not me. I think sometimes it could bring a good vibe. That's my point. But anyway, uh, matter of fact, let me go ahead and go through these last little bit. Since yeah, this is on quick. It's kid. We'll need that one. Um, yeah. We definitely should talk about was they already aware? What? About these snacks having being related to cancer. Uh-huh. I actually, you know what? Watch out for these uh low sugar, no sugar drinks that they got out here. Cause they full of cancerous things too. My husband does it this all the time. It drives me crazy. Well, I, I'm I'm guessing a black male. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. It's a bond thing. <laughs> All right, popular snack risk being banned over ca- cancer linked ingredients. Some some states have proposed past laws. Why do trying to get rid of us? I don't know, honorable. <laughs> some states have proposed past laws prohibiting certain uh, food chemicals. Support ingredients are linked to harmful health effects and need to go. Critics, uh, there are lack of scientific basis behind the claim. So obviously, these are the, some of the foods: uh, vegetable oil, red dye three, titanium dioxide, potassium. Um, uh, a couple other uh, shit you can't pronounce. Ingredients sure can. <laughs> uh, a black male is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Oh lord! I blame these lazy parents for not <laughs> for not uh, reading the labels. Listen, that's one thing that I do when I purchase stuff. I read the labels. Mm-hmm. I don't buy anything that has soy in it. it says Nestle. Um, Nestle adds sugars to infant milk sold in poor countries. Report. Fines. So why do they put sugar in the kids' milk in other countries? Hmm. Diabetes. Sugar. We know what sugar. <laughs> cancer and sugar go. You know sugar gonna give you sugar. <laughs> I've seen. Obviously, I've seen a lot of people say that sugar is one of those things that can lead to uh, cancer. It's, a, it's Listen, too much when, in your diet. When um, I had some uh, African employees, the ones I'm talking about from Liberia, and they always said everything in America is sugar, sugar, <laughs> sugar, sugar. sugar, sugar. <laughs> you gotta put sugar in everything. <laughs> Uh, a matter of fact, I was somebody was like uh, they were saying how in um, in Africa they don't put a lot of sugar in this stuff. Do you want any man boobs? <laughs> well, some of them, somebody in the comment section might want some a nice rack. <laughs> Just started drinking Diet Cranberry uh, Canada Dry. I hope it's not on the list. It's hard to find a regular one. Well, they don't have actually a lot of the uh, snacks they're getting rid of simply contain the ingredients. So you're not going to find that particular uh, item on the list. It, ha- it might be something Just look at all the band. stuff he listed as one of the ingredients that I, causes the cancer. I just did. No, that's what I'm telling him. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I thought you wanted me to go back. Okay. No. All right. Could a grain older than the will be the future of food? Here go Bill Gates again. 
Lost crops uh, like Fini, uh, Fano, Fanio could help us fight climate change and malnutrition. Yeah, so that's got, Bill all over it. Yeah, he, he didn't he, have to put his face up there. We knew it was him. He literally wrote it. Oh, look, Bob Bill Gates. He literally wrote this. Oh, so he went into an, uh, he's a writer now. He stay in Africa. He in another African country where he <laughs> found a grain that apparently is the one of the oldest grains, and he think this is the future of food for the world. That look like uh, um, quinoa. Yeah, the name of it is millets. Millets have uh, so much going for them. Why aren't they eating everywhere? No sugar in African food. What's causing them to lose their hairline oh, with shit. all these healthy food options? <laughs> Not all their food is healthy food options. Uh, one country, they just eat they eat a bread sandwich. Are oh, you talking about, uh, <laughs> that was Nigeria. It's literally Puff Puffs. They call it Puff Puffs. They say they Puff Puffs is like, is like our hush puppies. The, that damn Puff Puff ain't no hush puppy. Hush puppy is made with cornmeal. Make sure. <laughs> Look Hold at you. <laughs> Bill Gates is the Andrew Cartridge and Rockefeller of our day. Uh, eugenist. Oh, yeah, definitely. Honda is, uh, is a wander grain used by Africans for centuries. Yeah, yeah. Now uh, Bill Gates want to tap into it. He want to monetize it. Is anything healthy anymore? Well, I think you, I think anything can be healthy as long as you eat it at moderation. That's the biggest thing. Nothing in America is healthy. You simply need to eat it in moderation. Nothing is healthy. This, the food they tell you is healthy, usually it's fake food. They don't, they growing it. You know what? One time when I, before, hush puppies are dis- hush puppies are not disgusting. Are you honorable? You not from the south? Hold on, honorable. you claim hush you, you claim your folks from Alabama and you saying hush, hush puppy? Puppies? It's not a hush puppy. It's hush puppies. Oh man, hush, hush puppy are no, they not disgusting. Who made them for you? You surprised me with that one, seeing honorable. Damn, man, go to the Carolinas. Well, North Carolina. Let's be Pacific. Oh yeah, now they want to uh, separate from them. Damn, <laughs> South Carolina. Oh, it's the Carolinas. No, <laughs> you from South Carolina. I wow. agree. Wow, Kifa. Because y'all, y'all some uh northern Negroes. That's why y'all like, oh, oh y'all don't y'all don't know what hush puppies are. Wow. Soul food uh most definitely is <laughs> is healthy. Um it depends on how you cook it. Hush puppies is soul food. Agree, honorable. I've had them. They're horrible. You had them in NC, Bradley? You what? had hush puppies in NC? No way you said that. Facts, Regina. Well, you from the mid-Atlantic. You're not from the South. Pacific or specific? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I would expect they're from a pink toe. <laughs> she finally shot her jazz. I would expect they're from a pink toe. All right, let's move on to this right here. Uh, plastic- yeah, hot water cornbread is different. Plastic surgeons worn Ozempic face has taken over Hollywood. It's not just cornmeal. It's cornmeal and flour. It's literally like cornbread. So now they're saying, you see this right here? Where they sell a Zimpic face? Yeah. So now they gave you the medicine to lose the weight. Jessica Simpson? And now you got the sunk-in face. Now you got to go to the plastic surgery to fix the sunk-in face and stuff. Man, should have oh, stayed, stayed with Nick Lachey. <laughs> and now they got to do the... Hollywood plastic surgeons confront rise of Ozempic bodies. Is it chicken or is it tuna? <laughs> so now all these people are going to have to go get these surgeries to get this extra skin taken off. Once again, it has to be a economy that comes from everything they push in media. I hate the aftertaste of hush puppies. I'm you not mean, trying to stay on this hush puppy thing, but Kifa, who prepared these hush puppies for you? Pull up a picture of Sharon Osbourne and her daughter. Kelly Osbourne? Yeah, they look pretty bad. They all look pretty bad. <laughs> they look like uh, plastic death. Oh, hold on. Oh, wow. Damn. Not only is it, it makes them look way older. Yeah. The woman already uh, plump. I'm gonna be like Skeletor. IG their face. So hopefully this creates a good balance. I don't know why they're addicts. If we go do this crazy stuff to themselves. <clears throat> but because they're lazy, they don't want to get in a gym and do the work or at home do the work to lose the weight. <laughs> they want instant gratification instead of putting in work. Can't believe Being that. staying in shape is not fucking taking pills. Dude, they do like meth addicts. I agree. Eat better. 
Y'all work out. I can't believe y'all don't like hush puppies. Well, I'm not surprised by these uh, northerners and mid Atlantic people. <laughs> oh man. Anyway, I don't know what they're gonna do when they come back home. I don't. I don't know what they're gonna do. <laughs> I've had hush puppies at the soul food restaurants in Seattle and Tacoma. Exactly. You haven't had them in NC. You ain't had no real, no real hush They probably put puppies. onions in it, don't they? I'm pretty sure they put onions in the, the hush puppies up here. Hush puppies is like. It's, it's like, like fried, fried cornbread. Yeah, it's like cornbread. That's what it's like. Thank you, uh, Rosie. Thank, Thank you, you, Rosie. Rosie, mate, where are you from? <laughs> where are you from, Rosie? Uh, Have you ever had Uncle um Therms, Therms. Therms? No. No, what is that? No onions, just nasty. <laughs> oh wow. Well, honorable, we cannot change your opinion on okay, this. Okay, so. stick stand on it then. All right. I'm from San Francisco and I eat hush puppies. Thank Shout you, out thank to you. uh Nancy Pelosi's home. <laughs> Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> uh, all right, man. We better get up out of here. I just don't like it. It's uh, grainy. That's because they see, put too much cornmeal. They're not balancing with the flour. Yeah, yeah, it's not cooked um, properly, Kiva. It's not supposed to be grainy. Put up a picture of a corn of a hush puppy up there. Go to NC Hush Puppies. Show them how a hush puppy is supposed to look. Smithville chicken is 1.5 out of 5. <laughs> um, I've never had Smithville chicken. Oh, he said. Oh, he definitely in North Carolina, Smithville. Yeah, is that by is that by the Walmart? He probably talking about a different one. I don't know. Oh, where if he's talking about where he say he at, that's I think that's by a wall. That's NC's Hush Puppies. That's how they do theirs, <clears throat> like that. That's not grainy. You see that honorable? That's not grainy. <laughs> I don't have a problem with it. But. See now that right there, that probably is a little grainy right there. Little, that, that's grainy. That's overcooked. It's a lot going on. That's, but that says NC. Get it <laughs> so, off the screen. Get it off. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, okay. Man. Another another of the soul food places closed because of the shutdown. Oh, okay. Do um, you go to the Central District? Isn't that a black uh, area? The Central District, Kifa? Speaking of hush puppies, is Red Lobster going out of business? Niggas will keep it open. Niggas will keep it open for another 10 years if it's up to them. I only went to Red Lobster's for the the Cheddar Bay Biscuits, and I never ate any of the seafood there because I'm not a big seafood eater. I would just get the Cajun chicken, uh, fettuccine, whatever it was. Pass, I'll have cornbread. Black people have been keeping uh, Red Lobster in business the last 10 years. She said, pass on that. Once I had, look like NC. <laughs> Here she go. <laughs> okay, okay. Anyway. Anywho. I got to get y'all about it now. You ain't got to go home, but you got to get the hell up out of here. <laughs> get the people your last <laughs> words before we go. Uh, thanks for joining us on this Saturday. You could have been anywhere, but you chose to be here, and we appreciate it. And thank you. <laughs> she said she, said she ain't realized all last month. <laughs> Don't forget the source, dude. Oh, I will, I will. I'm going to definitely send it. Though they're going to stay on your ass about that source the last 20 years. I can't remember. It's been at least four or five years since I've been there. Peace, fam. Kentucky. Oh, yeah, Kentucky. Yeah. That's why you right next door. All right. Yo. Anyway, near the Appalachians, where all the uh, those weird uh, incest, the the hills, kid, hills have eyes, hills have eyes looking people are in the Appalachians. But yeah, uh, thank y'all for coming through. Uh, be sure to like it on your way out. Uh, share it if you can. Coming from Baltimore, the food here in <laughs> C is pretty bad and bland. Get you full. You know what? You used to eating crab cakes with a whole fucking bunch of obeying it. That's your problem. You well, from uh, Baltimore where they eat a whole bunch of seafood and have a whole bunch of spicy shit. I would say Baltimore probably has a lot more diverse spicy food. food. A lot more diverse food. So that might be why you're saying that. But he likes kicking his food. I'm sorry. We don't put obey in all of our shit. But anyway, man, as always, y'all be safe. All praise to the most high. And peace, man.
Watch your mouth, brilliant. <laughs>